This is Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Katrina Anderson smells trouble and calls on cheaters for help to determine what or who her gambler boyfriend does in his off time. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. In the beginning, our relationship was like A1. Me and Money were like best friends. He always came home. I never had to worry about him being out too late. He made sure he gave me a call, you know, he cooked, clean, bring me gifts. But all of a sudden, things have changed. Like, slowly but surely, it just changed. And like, out of nowhere, it's like, he's a, str he's a stranger. Like, I, I don't even know who he is now. I mean, he just not the money I knew. Money, age 30. A professional gambler accused of bluffing his way through his relationship. Cheater's elements converge on the home Katrina shares with the suspect. Sometime later, an unknown vehicle arrives. The suspect, otherwise known as Money, emerges from the house with a purse slung over his shoulders. Money gets into the sedan and, shadowed by the cheater's team, the suspect and his ride drive to a restaurant. Well, he has this best friend that he always hangs out with. For some strange reason, I never met him. But, I mean, quote, unquote, he's with him all the time. They hustle together, they gamble on the games, like, when it's time to meet him, you know, he always be cool. Well, yeah, you gonna meet kids today, baby, but it's like he bring him around while I'm at work. Like, why he can't come to the shop? I do her. I mean, it's open door. You can come in. But no, I never met him, but that's, he's always with Ken, you know, his best friend, quote, unquote. We had a great understanding. He was always coming home. He always checked on me. He brought me flowers, ran me bath water, had rose petals, cooked food, clean house. Like, he was always bringing me gifts here and there. Now, I barely even see him. And I can call him, it's a problem. He's always gambling, like, he's never there. He don't even give me a hug. I mean, we ain't passing with each other, like, I'm always out, he's in, I'm in, he's out. The pastel-wearing boys eat lunch together. Surprising cheaters investigators, Money slides his arm through his man friend's arm as they saunter back to the unknown male's car. The two men get into the car for a drive back to Money's pad. Upon arrival, the suspect gets out of the car and walks into his home, ending that day of surveillance. If I find out Money's cheating on me, I don't know what my reaction's gonna be. It's, I mean, I know for a fact it might be just real ugly, like, I have no tolerance. I have zero tolerance to foolishness and dumb, dumbfounded people. Like, I, I just don't know what I do. Like, I'm be hurt for one. I just hope y'all don't find nothing. Like that he's doing something. I hope he's with his best friend and not cheating. Like, I mean, it's gonna be real ugly. It's gonna hurt me. Cheater's detectives continue the stakeout. The same vehicle, driven by the suspect's buddy, arrives. With a different purse on his arm, money sachets out to the car, and away they go. A cheater's mobile unit covertly tails the vehicle to a bar. The two go inside, and seated inside, money and his boyfriend, now identified as Ken Cartwright, enjoy some quality time together as they sip their cocktails. After some time, the two men leave. Money pauses at the car to get some man love. Cartwright hugs and fondles Money by the car. The suspect and his manpanion return to Money's home, ending the day with Katrina none the wiser. Keeping account of the suspect's routines, Cheater stays glued to the stakeout. After a while, Cartwright pulls up. With his purse in hand, Money gets in. The lovers travel across town to a bar. Upon finding a table on the patio, a half-dressed Money and his beau scoot the chairs closer to each other. After a bit of time, Money leans close and wraps his arms around Cartwright for some cuddling. A bit later, Cartwright leads the suspect back to his car. The men travel through the neighborhood to the suspect's domicile. Money goes inside, ostensibly checking to see if Katrina might be home. After a quick check, the suspect returns to Cartwright's car. 
money, quite certain his secrets remain, walks his companion into the house. Later, as a disheveled, half-dressed Cartwright leaves, Cheaters prepares to rake money over the coals for an unsuspecting Katrina. Coming up, the confrontation. With all suspicions confirmed, Cheaters convenes with Katrina to expose the suspect's secret activities. Despite all her fears coming true, Katrina prepares for the reality of her circumstances. Katrina, you came to us for a few certain reasons this evening, and I just wanted to elaborate on those. Tell me a little bit about what's been going on with you and your boyfriend, Money. From what I understand, you guys have been together for two years. You share a home. And there's been some strange things going on. Can you elaborate? Yes. Now, me and Money, we've been together two years. The first couple of years, you know, the first year was okay. But as we got off into the relationship, like, a lot of things started changing. So are you ready to see what you come up with? Might as well. All right. So, Katrina, we begin our investigation outside of your residence. Look mm -hmm. familiar? Mm-hmm. Okay. A few moments later, this silver vehicle pulls up, stops right in front of the house. That's when we see money. That is money, correct? Mm -hmm. We see money get into the vehicle. As they drive, they arrive at a restaurant and a male steps out of the vehicle. I'll stop right there. Do you recognize him, that guy in the blue shirt? Not really. Not really? Are there, is there anyone from his work that he would normally his go best, out to lunch with? He always be with his best friend. That might, yeah, he's kind of fat a little, yeah. What's his best friend's name? Kenny or Ken or something. So this could possibly be Kenny or Ken? Yeah. All right, well, continuing on, they go into this restaurant and they sit down at a table. Then when they leave, they're arm in arm with each other. What the f is that? They return to the vehicle. We see that male get into the driver's side and he gets the passenger's side. They leave the restaurant. That gentleman drops him off of the house and he walks inside. One thing, if two guys go out and get a bite, but why were they holding... You know, well, arm in arm. So close. Like, what the f is that about? Yeah, well, that's what we're going to find out. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> oh, my God. Continuing on with our investigation, Katrina, on this day, we are outside of your residence. A few moments later, we see that same silver vehicle pull up. That's when we see money come out. He gets into the passenger side of the vehicle, and they drive. They arrive at a bar. The two of them get out, and we see that's a purse. We see them walk into a bar, they sit down and they hold hands at the table. They leave, they go out to the parking lot and that's when we see him hugging this man. Oh Lord, no. And before I let you turn around, they also do that. Gets back into the vehicle with this gentleman and they leave the bar parking lot. He then drops money off at the house and he walks inside. So this is getting completely strange. Katrina, on this day of our investigation, we see money in the house wearing no shirt, with a purse. He gets into that same silver vehicle and they leave. They arrive at a bar. That's when we see money get out. That same gentleman, they go inside. And during this meal, money receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you can remember this day, let alone this conversation. After finishing up that phone call, completely lying to you, he embraces with this gentleman. Now you see his face, eyebrow piercing. Does that look like Ken or Kenny? This is best friend, supposedly. The two of them get up together. They leave the bar. They return to the residence. That's when we see money get out. He goes into the residence, comes back outside, and brings this man inside with him. Hell no. A few moments pass, and a while later, that gentleman emerges with no shirt on, walks out of your home. He gets into the vehicle and he leaves. Man, where is he? Where this is what is I want to do. At this point in time, I think you've seen enough. Why don't we go ahead, get on the road. We know exactly where they're at. Money actually went and picked that gentleman up. 
and took them to a restaurant that's nearby. Are you ready to go confront these two? Mm -hmm. All right, right this way. Let's go find them. What is it? Right there, sitting right next to the entrance. Right there, right here at this table. What the f <laughs> is out doing? So what the f is you doing up here with this dude? What the f are my f is you doing inside? Coming up next, the conclusion. Man, where is he? Money actually went and picked that gentleman up. What the f <laughs> is out doing? So what the Grab her, grab her, grab her. What is bitch? What the hell is this? This is his girlfriend of two years that he lives with. Really? Did you know that? Really, Don't money? Touch the camera, boy. So I got a question for you. Are you? Nice tripping, bro. Money, where are you going? Oh, now y'all hugged up now, bitch. Money, where are you going? Bitch, don't walk out now. Man, y'all tripping. Bitch. Bitch. Bitch, you want a hoe? You want a bitch, bro? You want a Get away from the car. Chill, man. Bitch, let me go. Bitch, chill, bro. Bitch, you ain't got none of this hoe. You want to be like me, bitch? This what you want? And what's your name? Ken. So, Ken, why uh, why would you do this to, you know... I didn't know he had girl. nobody. Bitch, what you mean? You don't know. I didn't know he had nobody. <laughs> I didn't know he what had you nobody. You didn't know he had nobody? Uh-uh. Get away from the cars. So you had no idea. Where are they going? Oh, y'all running now. Y'all hoes running now, huh? What is bitch at? He said he had no idea. They're running down that way. They're running away. Bring the vans over. Come on. Let's go. So you hoes gonna run. Just like some pussies. I got more nuts than y'all. Man, stop following me with these cameras, bro. For real, man. Hey, what's up with this? I don't know, bro. They tripping, man. Where you going, man? What's up? Dude. I just have what, a couple man, questions what is for you. Why are following me with their cameras for, for what? what? What's because going on? Because your my... girlfriend hired us. Man, he was running like that. Are you serious, bitch? Your name's Ken, you said, right? Yeah, it's my name is Ken. All right, so, Money, can you tell me a little about what happened, man? Are you man? serious? Man, what happened? I, man, leave me alone, man. Are you bro, serious? I don't, man. Yeah, I man, y'all better get her, you. man, for real. What's up, man? You can never be me, bitch. You can never be me. This is my homeboy. What is she talking about, man? What so you gonna run up on me up? like that, man? What you mean? We weren't even hugged up. We just sitting there. What you mean? Y'all hugged up, bitch. Don't run up on me, bro. Just talk about it. Man, y'all ready to get up, man. What Stop you talking about? Up. Just talk about it, yeah. Tell me your side of the story. Can I talk to you for a minute over here? What exactly happened? What do you mean, what happened? What exactly happened? What's mean, what happened? I've seen everything. She hired us. We've been following you guys for some time now, and I've seen you guys go out for lunch. OK, what do you mean? We're going out for lunch. You guys, you know, What's get a little closer to each lunch? other. Bitch, lim ass hoe. Yeah, stop bitch, following me, man. Bitch. Yeah, you like hoe. Man, stop following yeah, me, bro. Yeah, I need to give you some, bitch. I'm going to give you these tins man, on your head, stop hoe. following me, man, with yeah. these cameras, bro, for real. Yeah, bitch, I'm going to give you these tins, hoe. You want to bitch, I'm going to give you one right here. Stop following me, man. Yeah. Man, move, for real, yeah, man. Yeah, don't move now, bitch. I mean, do normal friends that our guy friends kiss each other when they go to lunch? Y'all ain't, ain't saw us kiss because we ain't kissed. Really? I'm you sure about saying, that? Yeah. You're going to keep lying to me? Yeah, we're lying about what? I ain't got to lie about nothing. Man, move for real, bro. Stop following me. Yeah, I need to get paid, bitch. Y'all think y'all going to do this and don't pay me? I got you guys on videotape. I've had people... You ain't got those ladies. You got... Like you want to see it? Something. Yeah, bitch, where's the, yeah. Where's the iPad this at? This what you looking for, bitch. Nah, I don't want this that. what you looking for, huh? I don't want that. Yeah, that's what you looking for, huh? I don't want that. Yeah. I, I know that. it, Man, bitch. Man, chill, bro, me. What you talking to, bitch? What you talking about? I know it. Man, I don't even want to talk about my money. I know it. it. Quit running, well, bitch. You better follow me, for. Because, bitch, are you going to do something, huh? Hey. You ain't got nothing. Nothing? No, oh, you ain't got nothing. So you're not, you're, are you going to keep lying to me? What's this? I don't know what that is. That's not you? Okay, what that okay, what that mean? Why are you squeezing on his butt cheeks? Homeboy. The homeboy? Yeah, that's a homeboy. So what you talking about? Come on, man, let's go, man. Stop talking to him. Yeah, what is bitch here? Where is bitch here? Come on, man. Where is bitch? Man, move! Move, get out of my way, man. Bitch, I'll spit on you, hoes. Coming 
Open the, the door, door, bitch. Open the door, ho. Yeah, you bitches some ho, ho. Yeah. I'ma look at that. I'ma look at that. I know it. Hey, pussy. let's get you out of here. They're calling the police right okay, now. Come on, let's go. You. Everyone, load up. I had no opportunity to get anything from the two of them. I even tried to talk to that guy. His name is Ken. That is his friend. And he said that... The best friend. That, yeah, he said that he completely <laughs> lied and yeah. had no idea that you existed. And then he completely lied to me, said they weren't doing anything. I had to show him our evidence and he still like, come on, of course they're not going to admit it because they pussies. What's next for you, Katrina? Oh, I'm moving on. Like, he's kicked to the curb like a bed. He like some trash garbage. That's what he is, garbage. I take that out every day. Following the chaos of the confrontation, Katrina tries to wrap her mind around her boyfriend's sexual proclivities. Later, Cheaters explains her mindset. For now, Tegan discusses what life has been like since the night she was caught horsing around on Cheaters. Mike and I met on an app called Tinder, and I guess it's like a hookup app. And so from there, we just kind of met in a few public places and hung out a few times. He never really said he had a girlfriend. I mean, I kind of assumed just because of the phone calls I heard him take, but I mean, I didn't really care. We were just hooking up, not like we were in a relationship or anything. What the f What the f Are you f you kidding me? What are you f kidding me? What the f are you f What the f are you f What the f are you f Mike, what the f is this? Mike. Who the f are you? What the f are you? What the f are you? people everywhere. Is that It didn't matter. What the f all these people everywhere? Who the f oh, what the f is you? this? Well, it would have been nice if he would have told me that he did have a girlfriend so we could have met more discreetly. It was pretty awkward not having clothes on and knowing that there was cameras in my face. But um, he immediately started calling me after he and his girlfriend went their separate ways. And I mean, I just didn't take his call for a couple of days and then he explained to me everything that happened, and I just kind of let it be, and then we started seeing each other again. What the f are you doing, bitch? What the f Oh my god. Who the hell is she? What does it Look even matter? What does it even matter? Who the f she is? is. Okay. Oh my god. If you would just do something besides, like, maybe just lay there like a pillow princess, what does it matter? Are you what the f does it matter? What is it? Who the hell? What the so Mike, who are all y'all? What the is it? No. Of course, how this is, is cheaters. The reason why we're here is because she, she called us because she thought you were cheating cheaters. on us. Cheaters, cheaters. that's obviously yeah, you're a cheater. So wait, so you called them so I can be at work late every other you're night. Work working late. on, you're not I actually working. am working. Me and Mike both agree that we have a very strong mutual attraction. So we still see each other from time to time and it's a mutual agreement and that's really all. At this point, I mean, I'm really not looking for a relationship. I'm not looking to be with just one person. I work full time and I go to school full time. So those are my main focuses. And uh, I just kind of let it be. Disgusted by the deceitful dealings of her boyfriend and his BFF, Katrina moves out immediately following the revelations of the confrontation. The suspect, Money, declares to Cheater's producers that he and his companion keep a strictly platonic relationship. Money claims he can't be gay if he likes women, too. The suspect's companion, Ken Cartwright, takes a different tack when questioned by Cheater's officials. Cartwright claims he still sees the suspect on a regular basis. Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. James Shepard works as a bodyguard who tries hard to protect his relationship. As red flags come to his attention, James summons help from cheaters to determine the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. 
Sarah now. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not the same Sarah. Um, the thing that attracted me to Sarah was, was definitely her compassion, her gentleness, her, uh, her forgiveness. One thing that stood out about Sarah is she would never, ever raise her voice. Now it's like she goes off for the slightest thing. Um, if I ask her why she didn't pick up her phone, there was, there was a time before where she would break her neck to pick her phone up just to let me know she was okay. Now she's really short with me. Uh, she's become very condescending. It's, 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 it's as though she's trying to push me away. Sarah Smith age 26, a barista accused of brewing up a foul concoction in her relationship. Cheaters headquarters dispatches a squad of agents to the suspect's residence. After some time, Smith makes her presence known. Leaving her apartment and covertly followed by the cheaters team, the suspect drives to a supermarket. Smith meets up with an unknown male. As the two enter the store, it becomes apparent to cheaters that the relationship goes beyond the platonic friendship. I'm basically paying for everything. There's this desire for her to always want to be at work. And I'm not saying where the money's going. She doesn't really have anything to show for it. Man, I've been doing everything that I've been doing since day one. Um, Aside from me not spending all day with her due to the fact that I have another job, I'm still putting forth an effort to still have our date night, our movie nights, and spend that quality time together. Despite the fact that the new job is, is, is taking a little more out of me, I'm, I'm uh, still making a concerted effort and making her number one in my life. But I just don't feel like She's reciprocating that these days. Inside the store, the overly friendly couple shops for a few items. Some time later, the suspect and her mysterious friend leave the store. The pair holds hands and kisses quickly before entering their respective vehicles. The suspect leads her unknown partner back to her residence. The illicit couple goes inside. After a while, the unknown male exits the apartment alone. As the man leaves, it signals an end to the night of surveillance. If Sarah's cheating, there's, there's, there's no way I can forgive her. I'm, Sarah knows what I've what I've been through, and and we there's 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 no way to resolve this. If she's cheating, it's over. There's there's nothing we can do to reconcile it. Um, I know she's gonna have a lot of excuses. Um, perhaps she's gonna try to justify it, but it's it's not gonna hold up. agents continue the stakeout. At some point, Smith's companion arrives and enters the suspect's apartment. Sometime later, Smith emerges with the man, now identified only as Joel. The dynamic duo hop into the Batmobile. Smith and Joel drive to the city garden park. Holding hands romantically, the twosome finds a secluded spot near a gushing fountain. Smith grabs a seat and entices Joel to join her. The pair spends quality time with each other by the fountain. After a while, Joel and Smith get up to enjoy the rest of the gardens. The suspect nuzzles and kisses her companion as they make their way through the park. Eventually, the adulterous couple ends the sojourn at Joel's vehicle. Ever the gentleman, Joel packs his date carefully into his car. The suspect's bow drives them both back to Smith's home. Joel gently helps Smith exit the car and receives a sweet kiss for his efforts. Waving goodbye to his heartthrob, Joel leaves ending this day of surveillance. Under cover of darkness, the cheater's team sticks to the game plan. Joel arrives. The man goes inside to pick up his lady love. The suspect rides with her companion to an ice cream shop. Smith and Joel go inside and order up a couple of sweet treats. The suspect and her illicit boyfriend step outside to find a quiet spot. Smith and Joel sit down and enjoy their cold snacks and warm relationship. After a while, the pair works their way back to Joel's car. Tailed by cheaters, Smith and Joel drive back to the suspect's apartment. As Smith allows Joel to stay the night, Cheater stays up collating all information for a concerned James. Coming up, the confrontation.
Now that the suspect's deceit crystallizes, Cheaters carries out the plans for disclosure to James. Hoping for the best, but expecting the worst, James preps himself for bad news. James, first thing I'd like to say is thank you for coming out this evening. I understand that, you know, you got a lot going on right now, so we'll just get right to it. As you know, we have conducted our investigation. That's why you are here. Are you ready to see what we've come up with? Yeah, I have to, yeah. All right. James, we begin our investigation outside of Sarah's house. A few moments pass. We see her walking down the stairs, and she leaves her home. She drives for some distance, and she arrives at a supermarket. And then she meets up with this gentleman in the red T-shirt. I'm going to stop it right there. You recognize that guy? Oh, who the f is that? They walk into the supermarket together. OK, well, after they finish up the shopping, James, they leave in separate vehicles and return to her home. That's when we see that gentleman walk inside with her. And a while later, he comes out, he gets back into his vehicle, and he leaves the premises. Continuing on with our investigation, James, on this day, we're outside of Sarah's home. That's when we see that gentleman pull up. He walks up the stairs. Little fat ass pig. He walks down the stairs with Sarah, gets into the vehicle, and they leave. As our detectives follow them, they arrive at an ice cream parlor. Oh, perfect. And they go inside to get some ice cream. Fat kid style. After they get their ice cream, you can see the two of them actually go outside and sit together at a table. During this time, James, she receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that conversation. Tell me if you can remember this day, let alone when you talked to her. Now, as you see, she hangs up the phone after completely lying to you, man. You see them go back to the vehicle, they get inside, and they leave. As our detectives tail them, they arrive back at Sarah's residence. That's when we see both of them get out of the vehicle, and he stays the night. What? Spent the night? Spent the night at your girlfriend's home. James, we got a location on the two of them right now. They're at a park eating dinner together, trying to get romantic. If we get in the vans right now, we can bust them. Are you ready? Let's go get his fat ass. All right, right this way. You ready? It is, mother. They're right there. Hey, babe. What's going on? You guys doing all right? No, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Who is this? Hi. What are you doing? I'm um, just hanging out. Yeah? Sarah, hanging who, out. who's this gentleman? Um, who, yeah, who is this? This is this Nice is to meet you, buddy. I'm Joel. You yeah, guys drinking? You guys have any extra glasses? No. Joel, do you know that this is her boyfriend? Yeah. No, I, For a year and a half? I don't. You have no idea? Oh, don't worry about that. He's our bitch now. Really? So she, she didn't tell you anything like that? No, she didn't tell me. What did she tell you exactly? Eat up. We've been together for six Come months. Come here, talk to me. For six months? I, I didn't mean for it to get this far, and I... So how far was it meant to go? I mean... Eat it. I, I really honestly, good. I meant Eat it. just tell him that I didn't want to see him anymore, and it wasn't ever meant to get this far. She got my pictures everywhere over there. What's your problem? What's your problem, buddy? What's your problem? You problem, buddy. You're mine. Ah. Everything that belongs to Sarah belongs to me. Coming up next, the conclusion. You guys doing all right? No, sit down. Joel. I, I didn't mean for it to get this far. Eat it. Really good. Eat it. No. What happened then? What was the lack of communication? Because with what he with what he told me, he told me that this has been this is this weird stuff's been going on for a while. That's why he called this in the first place because he wouldn't. Sir. I honestly, I meant to to talk to him about it, and I I just never took the time. I never, I guess. Were you too afraid to or something? Yeah, I mean, he's kind of an intimidating dude. Orky! 
I'm talking to you. You got something to say to me? Security. Up, man. Something to say to me? Up. Hmm? Up, man. Oh, hold up. Let me get it locked in there. Let's get it in there good. Oh. You know, you got him running around chasing that guy that had no idea that he was even your boyfriend. Yeah, I, I should have said something to him a lot sooner. What happened? I mean, I think you owe him some explanation. Yeah. Honestly, babe, I met him in high school, and I, I never meant for this to get any further than just a, a casual friendship. So what is this? Casual friendship? Yeah, casual friendship. You haven't friendships. had time for me in about a month now. Yeah, so, we're, so what are you going to do now? Because I'm out of the picture. I'm not done with him, but he won't be much when I get done with him. You got any more high school friends? You have nothing else to say, sir? I mean, you have this elaborate, you know, dinner table right here with candles and everything. I had to put some thought into it. So I'm sure you, I mean, you have nothing to say about yeah. this at all. So, so who is this? Who am I? Who are you? Joel, did she tell you, did she, she, she didn't tell you anything you? about this? She didn't about tell me about boyfriend? this at all. She, I didn't know she had a boyfriend. Really? So when you guys were having ice cream together and she, she walked away for a phone call, who did she say that was? She just said it was one of her girlfriends. Really? Yeah. Just on site. What, what is this? You're right. I, I apologize. I what mean, did there's he take nothing all that your... I'm going to say that's going to make this any what, better. What can he do for you? What, did he take your high school test for you? <laughs> is he paying bills? Honestly, he's become one of my best friends, and that's all it started out and, as. And so, what, and what about me? What, I mean, what happened to us? I mean, what happened? When did it go bad? What did I do wrong? Besides, yeah, what, what did he do wrong? Sacrifice everything for you. You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. Really? And you just, it's just, it's all you? Dude, I didn't know. It was just free, you know? Just sit and talk with me for a minute. Talk about what? I was gonna end it with you, James. Yeah. Bet you were. I bet you were. I hate you. Please stop. I hate you. James. Yeah, he knew something. Honestly, what? How can you say he didn't know? Why wouldn't you tell him? Or why wouldn't you just say something to him? Because I was thinking that I was gonna end it with James before I was gonna do anything further with him. Six months ago, while you're still with James? James, what do you wanna do, man? This is ultimately up to you. I fell in love with him, okay? And I was gonna end things with you, and I didn't do it the right way. If you want him, if you want him, you can have him. James. <laughs> Please. He didn't do this. I did. You want to load up and get out of here, man? Yeah, yeah, Please. of course. Yeah. I'll be back to get my things, okay? I'll be over. I'll be outside my door. Outside your door? Hop on in. Load up. I'm sorry, okay? I should have said something to you. Please, Joel. Just one more chance. Uh, I don't know if I can do it. Please. You know what? I don't know what her problem is. I, I honestly, your chick does not want to say a damn thing about what she's done wrong. She was literally a deer in the headlights and at a loss for words. She didn't seem to care, man. Succeeding the confrontation, James feels betrayed beyond redemption. Later, Cheaters briefs you on his plan of action. At this moment, please welcome to the Cheater Studios, Dochelle Marshall. Dochelle discusses the day she exposed her man at lunch with another woman on Cheaters. After Clark revealed to me um, everything that I had been feeling and thinking, I felt relieved, but at the same time, I wanted to let him know that I did know so he can quit lying to me. 
When I walk in the restaurant and see him kissing her, I just got outraged. I got so mad and upset, because I'm like, were you kissing this woman in the mouth? I don't know where her mouth been. You know, I don't know what she do, and then you come home and kiss me with them lips? No. Where this mother <laughs> You back the door? All this bull Back her door. What the fuck you back her door with this bitch? And who the fuck is you? Uh, you no, nah, bitch, don't put your mother hands on me. You do don't put your mother hands on me. This is you don't touch me, damn it. Do not put your mother hands on me. Do not. This the you been doing. This what we doing? It made me mad when he said that he put me on and all whatever he was saying. It made me mad because when I met Quinn, he didn't have nowhere to live. He was living with his auntie. He had a, a broke down car. You know, that's why he was using my car. It stay in the shop. And you try to say you make me, you don't help me like that at all. I work and I have a side hustle. So you don't do nothing for me. I pay my bills. You know, you he contributed why he was there, but he didn't have nothing before he came. You gonna do it like that? You gonna do it? This big boy swag entertainment, man. You gonna do it like that? I'll put your ass on the map. You ain't put a mother thing on the map, baby. I, I had my own before you came. So don't sit up and holler. You done did a bitch ass man, thing for me. This big boy bitch, swag entertainment. I'm about to piss in the wheel and throw the when I got with you. You, bitch, I made you this. It's what I paid for. And you tell your mother name. After the confrontation, he called me that whole day, that whole night for, it continued on for like three or four days. And then after that, I guess he kind of got the picture. He, he'll text me here and there and ask me how I'm doing. And I and we friends on Facebook still. So, you know, he'll inbox me and ask me how I'm doing or, you know, we can try again. But I told him that's over with. That's done with. I'm on to somebody else. I don't move on. Docelle, you gonna do it like that? For real? Really, bro? You gonna do it like that? Yeah, I'm doing it like that. Yeah, I'm doing it like that. Bye. Get in the car with that hoe and buy me my mother key. Baby. No. I'll holler at you later, baby. Now you wanna talk? I done asked you a million times. Who the f is she? It's all good. Talk to It's sweet. all good. Talk to sweet. I don't even know you. I know Take my home looking like hey, Donkey Kong. Take my home. What I have learned in my going forward is to never let my intuition let me down. Never. I always follow my first mind. If I feel something, I'm going to act on it right then instead of letting it continue to go on in progress because it's not worth it. I actually have started seeing someone. I've been dating him now for three weeks. He's a wonderful guy so far. Um, but I'm on, I'm moved on from Quinn. I don't even think about Quinn. That situation is dead and done. Frustrated and perplexed by his girlfriend's actions, James Shepard decides to let go of the suspect. Feeling a lack of love, James knows the breakup will be the best thing for him. James resolves to throw himself into his work, determined to move beyond this mild hiccup in his world. Speaking to Cheaters producers, Sarah Smith states, she never meant to cause any harm to James. James was always working, always gone. I never meant to hurt him, but the heart wants what the heart wants. Smith and her companion continue to see each other. The suspect's companion, Joel, reaffirms Smith's stories to Cheaters producers, claiming our love is for real. This detective agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Within the last few weeks, Brandy Landry notices several issues with her boyfriend's attitude. Concerned that something untoward occurs behind her back, Brandy asks for aid to vanquish her fears. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. I met Tommy a little over three and a half years ago. We met through social media and uh, instantly hit it off over the phone and I said, I moved back to the Metroplex, and everything's been really good until recently, so. Tommy, age 48, 
a marketing manager of a fitness club, suspected of getting in a few extra workouts with another woman. After a short briefing, Cheaters deploys intel units to the suspect's workplace. Upon Knight's descent, Cheater's private eyes spot the suspect as he leaves work. Tommy drives to an uptown shopping center. The suspect parks and walks to a nearby coffee shop. Inside, Tommy grabs a cup of coffee. Outside, the suspect meets up with an unknown woman. Tommy greets the female with a hug and a kiss. Um, my suspicions here lately have been the fact that he's been working late several nights a week. His checks haven't been any bigger. Um, Tommy's a marketing manager at a gym and he's working for commission and you would think if you're working late, you're bringing home more money. Um, Tommy's been working more hours than I put in promoting bands, so I don't, I'm just, I'm not stupid. I, I know there's gotta be something going on. When I call him because he's late, he's really rushed and it's, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, love you, bye. And he, he hangs up. It's, it's never more than a minute, if that. Nothing like it was, you know, even three and a half months ago, where, you know, he'd stay on the phone for 15, 20 minutes at a time. Um, I also did find, I was going through his phone, looking for something he asked me to look for, and I found a picture of him and this bimbo chick with her boobs hanging out, and it's just, it's like, really? That's not even what you're into. You're more of an ass man-wise, or tit, what, you know, what is this? And he just explained it as a, a client that, that really just is outgoing like that which I don't find appropriate at all. Taking a pause from their window shopping, the pair stops momentarily. Tommy gropes his partner. After a few minutes, the suspect and his mysterious lady continue their jaunt. The short walk ends at the woman's car. Tommy gets one last grab of her luscious derriere. The lady gets into her car. As Tommy walks back to his car, the woman drives away. I've invested three and a half years of my time, my emotions, my love. I, I've been through this before, and I swore I wouldn't do it again. I figured with someone older, I wouldn't have to worry about these problems. But, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully we don't find anything at all. But if we do, I just, I, I really, I mean, I'll lose it. I don't know. I don't know where I'll go or what I'll be doing. I, I just don't know. Cheaters investigators stay on the stakeout. The Cheaters team watches as Tommy leaves work for the night. The suspect drives across town to an upscale restaurant. After a short wait, the woman from previous surveillance arrives to passionately greet Tommy. The woman, now identified only as Jenny, holds hands with the suspect as the pair enters the restaurant. Once inside, quite a bit of playful fondling occurs. Sometime later, after finishing the meal, the suspect escorts his date back to her car. Tommy kisses Jenny as she wraps her legs around his torso. Jenny gets into her car. The suspect walks to his own vehicle. Tommy drives home to his neglected girlfriend, Brandy. Spotting the suspect's routine, Cheater's detectives stay with the stakeout of Tommy's workplace. At the end of the day, the suspect leaves work. Cheater's investigators covertly follow Tommy to a motel. The suspect goes to one of the rooms. Jenny opens the door. Tommy greets his femme fatale. The suspect enters the door. Cheater's agents wait. Sometime later, the door reopens. Jenny wears a towel and Tommy's shirt hangs out. The suspect gives his paramour a goodbye kiss as his hands wander all over her body. Tommy leaves the room, pausing in his car to tuck in his shirt. As the suspect cleans up his evidence before going home to Brandy, Cheaters prepares their evidence for a meeting with Brandy. Coming up, the confrontation.
Now that Cheater's agents have collected a cornucopia of damning evidence against the suspect, Cheater's producers contact Brandy. Grappling with the prospect of life alone, Brandy now decides to examine all findings. Brandy, the first thing I'd like to say is um, we're glad to have you here this evening. I understand there's been a lot of things going on in your relationship right now with Tommy. Are you ready to see what we've come up with? Sure. All right. All right, Brandy. We begin our investigation outside of his workplace. Mm -hmm. We see him emerge. He walks out, he gets into his vehicle, and he leaves. Mm -hmm. As our detectives follow Tommy, he arrives at a shopping center. We see him pull into the parking lot, park his car. He gets out, and he walks. That's when we see him walk over to a coffee shop. He is by himself. Walks in, grabs a cup of coffee, and then when he comes out, Standing there, all of a sudden he's approached by this woman in the boots. Ew. Smoking a cigarette. Oh my god. They kiss right. This thing I know is... it's I know it's hard to watch this stuff, but uh. they kiss in front of the coffee shop, walk over in front of a mattress store where he proceeds to squeeze That's all a... over her, pull her shirt up. I mean he's he's being very touchy feely with this girl, in a uh, sense. That's a bitch that was in the picture. This is the girl that was in the picture you yeah. saw? Yeah. Are you 100% on that? Oh, I'm 100%. So this is that same girl then? Oh, yeah. Definitely. A gym client? Yeah, supposedly. Supposedly. Okay, well, after they're hugging and kissing in front of the mattress store, he then proceeds to walk her to her vehicle where he then extends his arms below her waistline and just grabs all over her. They kiss multiple times. She gets into her vehicle and leaves and he does as well. Moving forward with our investigation, Brandy, on this day, we're outside of Tommy's workplace. And a few moments later, he waltzes out, gets into his car, and he leaves. As our detectives follow him, he drives and arrives at this motel. A door opens close to where he parked, and that same woman from the previous day is there. During the time that he walks into that motel room, Brandy, he receives a phone call what you're about to hear is the audio from that conversation. Hello? Hey, man, what are you doing? Hey, Todd. Um, I'm working late tonight. I'm, I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to call you yet to tell you. It's going to be a couple of hours, you know. Okay, so are we doing dinner still, or what's the game? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, we're constantly dinner and everything. It's just uh, it's going to be a couple hours late. Okay, well, give me a call on your way home. Mm -hmm. A couple hours late. It was more like five hours late, but... After finishing up your phone call, short time later, door opens with her in a towel only. <sighs> what a completely whore. nude. His pants, you can see his belt hanging out. He has to walk over to his car before he can even get inside. He's tucking in his shirt, mm -hmm. fixing his pants. Getting the trousers all buttoned up. I know, I know what night that was. That's. You know what night that was? Oh, God, yes. We'll that come was back the first over here night. for a second. Oh, my God. He gets into his vehicle and he leaves the motel. Okay. So, what we're going to do, we're going to go stage. Okay. Wait for Detective Gomez to give us a call, mm -hmm. get a location. Brandy, are you ready to go confront these two? <laughs> you know I am. I'm just, it's time for this to be done and over. All right, well, let's go get you the truth right, right this way. Thank you. There's our detective right there. Give me one second. Gomez. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, so he left his job. They went to Havana's restaurant and club. All right, copy that. We'll see you soon. All right, bye. They're together right now at a place called Havana's. It's a nightclub slash bar and lounge from what I got, but Gomez is going to come out, and he's going to direct us to where they're at. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Brandy? Okay, come on. Be careful, okay? So you're right when you walk in, all right? Yeah. Coming up, the conclusion. They went to Havana's restaurant and club. I'll have you lead. I'll put her first so she can get right to them.
Clark Gable with the show Cheaters. The only reason why we're here is because she called because she thought that you were cheating on her. Can I talk to you outside? Are you kidding? A hooker like that? A what? No. Yeah. I'm telling I'm trying to tell you. Who the f is she? I saw a picture Her of her. Her name is Jimmy. Oh, really? Yeah, really. And she me real good. I just have one question. Did he approach you? He sure did. He sure did. What did he say? He wanted, He, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not going to say anything. It is what it is. Hang tight for me for a minute. I'll be sure, back. Sure, no problem, Clark. All right, thank you. Go, 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 take her back to that little motel room. You know, since you, that's what you're into, obviously. You don't go anywhere classy with her? That's where the trailer park stays, isn't it? I guess you can take the girl out of the trailer park, but not the trailer park out of the girl. Huh. Jenny. <laughs> nothing like you think. Jenny? Oh, honey, I can tell yeah, you right now, her she's her a Jenny. trailer. Her Jenny. She's okay. trailer trash. I mean, you've been, you've been, you've been with Brandy for three and a half years, and from oh, what, what she's hell? told me, three and a half years, you're and you're throwing it away. A pretty solid guy. So I'm just trying to get your side of the story. Uh, you know you know, I'm not here to upset you or anything. I'm just here to understand what mistake you made and what happened. Oh, this is a business deal. You know, I'm trying to bank money for my boss. Trying to business deal? Yeah. Is that all you're gonna tell me? Well, unless you got something to prove otherwise. Yeah, I have a lot to prove otherwise. I mean, are you sure you didn't go anywhere? You didn't go to a motel room, didn't have dinner together, and you know, take a phone call while yeah. you were inside the motel? Of course I'd, I'd take a client out to eat. I'd take a client to dinner. You know, what's up? That's what's, that's what's up. It's one thing taking a client to dinner, it's another thing taking a client to grab some coffee, but it's one thing to take a client to a motel room fully undressed her to the point you. where you come out with your pants still unbuttoned. You guys have been all over me, haven't you? You know, you're very comfortable. What, the what are you doing with my man? No, bitch. Bitch, no, you know, I've been for three and a half. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Take it, no, why don't you get it, man? Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Hey, go, no, no, back off, back off, back off. Y'all deserve each other. Take your trailer trash. Get out of my face. Get your whore, whore. <laughs> Come on, you bitch. Come on, let's get it. I don't want anything to do with this trash anymore. Tommy, you have nothing He's to say stuck at all? that. I've said plenty. You need to shut up. Me? Yeah, you. What? Are you going to threaten him? Why? Because you got get something. Right. Him? Uh, excuse me? You serious, man? Man, if that wasn't on camera right now, I'd be beating you. I was holding you with one hand and beating your ass with the other. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Why, well, why are you worried about the cameras? I came here to talk to you, not to upset you or anything, to ask you a couple simple oh, questions. Here. Where's my glasses? Someone why? forgot his glasses. They're not working anyway. Obviously. You can't see that. $1, that $1, Glass. Someone's bitch. getting in trouble for that. Your glasses are right there in your pocket. These ones? These? Talking about these, honey? The ones that don't work? Hey, look, I got them. Bitch ass. Go screw your whore. I'm out. Give me the keys oh, to my car. Ass, bitch. Here. Come on, bitch. Here. Come on, I'm gonna you up. Somebody my glasses. All right, your glasses up. I'll drive. Let them go. Let them go. Okay? It's all right. Don't be okay. You're gonna be all right. As soon as I take her home. Oh, oh, baby. You're not coming home. Yeah, baby. You take that picture. Don't come, come home. To you, baby. Tommy, do you have anything? Do you have anything to say to anyone that would see this right now? Oh, my. Yeah. Drive off, you little whore. You ready to come on? Come on. Come on. Keep driving. Yeah, you're gonna keep driving because you're a puss. You're a puss like that. You're not even a woman. You're not even a woman. And you're not a man. You're not a man. Go to hell!
With the confrontation behind her, Brandy realizes a harsh decision needs making. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals her plans. But now, Larry White provides us further insight into how his life has improved since catching his blasphemous girlfriend with another man on Cheaters. You know, the old story back in the day with me was believe half of what you hear, all of what you see. So what I seen was something that I wasn't expecting. I tried to have a younger woman in my life, and that was a big mistake on my part. But once I seen it with my own eyes, I had to accept that. That's the way the Lord had it planned. He had it planned for me to find out, and it was something that I needed to find out before it went too far. What is all the girls? This what, is what? just my friend. Your friend? Are oh you serious? Gosh. Are you really serious? At the church? Do you do this with your well, friends? I'm just saying, if you told me you was out with your friends, or uh, your girlfriends, I don't see the girls. Where the girls at? Oh, that's the part I'm worried about. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. You have the cameras following me, and I'm, I'm, I'm just coming out asking of church. a question, baby. All I want to know is the truth. I mean, if she really wants to be with that man, I wish him the best, but then to and again, what goes up must come down. I respect what he said, because he gave me some wisdom, some knowledge, but all I want him to realize is one thing, two things for sure, keep living, son. You going where I done been, and that's up, because he sure ain't going down. I was trying to get an understanding with her, man. No understanding, I don't want you, what? She don't even want you, man. Get your mother Ass on. There ain't no way to talk to me, young man. Man, that's some bull, dude. I'm on. We at church, man. You don't come on you church properly church like that. No, nah, we just left it. Well, I know we yeah, got don't see what for him to say, I will come get my from your house. What do you want to know? I want you, you're all, oh, dude. You don't love me at all, Pinky. At all. No, I love and love with him, not you. I learned a whole lot from that situation. And I have to thank Cheetahs for helping me because I couldn't afford no detective or nobody to go out and find out what she was doing, but it was in the back of my mind. I knew she was doing something she didn't have no business. She kept telling me one thing, but it was always another. And she broke the news to me on the church premises. So I just want to be around somebody that's more on my level. I love my animals. I love my space. And I just want to be able to go out and do the things that I do and come home to somebody that appreciates me for me. Following the confrontation, Brandy Landry decides to give the suspect a second chance. We can work on this. I know we can. This is just a bump in the road. The suspect, Tommy, feels he deserves a second chance. Tommy and his companion no longer see each other. Despite the suspects breaking off their relationship, the companion, Jenny, feels the suspect will come crawling back to her. This detective agency's private eyes on cheaters. Please meet Bryce Paul, a videographer on the edge. Feeling as though the lens to his relationship has become foggy, Bryce requests Cheaters help in clearing the air. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. In the, in the beginning, man, when we, when we first got together, everything was great, man. Um, you know, I, Amber was, she was like a, kind of like a straight edge person, and then just, all of a sudden, this, this weed thing came and she just wanted to smoke weed. And I, I, I don't understand where it came from or, or why it even came about. But, you know, um, I thought we were, we were both on the same page. You know, she was working. So I figured she didn't want to lose her job just as well as I didn't want to lose my job for smoking weed. And I don't know who introduced her to it, but ever since then, it's like, that's all she thinks about every day is waking up smoking weed. Amber Butler, age 31, a daycare worker accused of babying another man. After getting details on the suspect's schedule from Bryce, Cheater's headquarters dispatches a squad to the suspect's workplace. The suspect finishes her shift at work. A Cheater's mobile unit tails Butler through the neighborhood to a convenience store. 
After a quick stop to pick up a couple of beers, Butler gets back on the road. Followed closely by the cheater's team, Butler arrives at a restaurant. The suspect gets out and walks to the front door. Butler returns to her vehicle a few moments later with an unknown man. They sit in the car and smoke. One, one day, man, we, well, we, uh, we left church, and I, I, I kind of felt that there was a problem then, but I didn't address it. But as soon as we got out of church, we got in the car, she started rolling blunts. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? We still in the church, on the church parking lot. And she, you know, she, she rolled a blunt, and, and before we can get out the parking lot, she started smoking the blunt. So I'm telling her, hey, you know, you got to put that out because we're in church. And, 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 and the next thing comes out of my mouth is, well, hey, let's go around the back and have sex. Like, at the church? Like, seriously? And I mean, it was kind of weird, and, and it, it kind of it kind of pissed me off, to be honest with you, because I didn't understand it. I thought she was playing, but man, she was she was she was really serious. So one night I decided that I was gonna, you know, I was gonna try to surprise her with some tickets that I got to a concert. So I went over to her house, and she told me she was at home. So I just felt like, you know, if I was a man, I could just surprise her. When I walked in, I immediately smelled the weed smoke, but you know, I didn't. I just thought I just figured she had just been smoking. But, um, through, you know, when I was there, I, I started, I smelled men's cologne on it. When I hugged, I smelled the cologne on it. Um, I went in the bathroom, I smelled cologne, and I realized that the toilet seat was up. So when I asked her about it, you know, of course, she tried to make it seem like I was crazy and, you know, saying that, I, you know, I'm always tripping. And it just, I mean, it started a big old fight for nothing, man. And, you know, I was just asking questions because, I mean, I seen something different that I, I never seen before. A short while later, the couple exits the SUV. The male wraps his arms around Butler's shoulders as they walk into the building. After satisfying the munchies, Butler and her unknown man leave the restaurant. Pausing by the vehicle, Butler kisses her lunch date. The man leaves. Butler drives home, ending the day of surveillance. Man, if I find out that Amber's cheating on me, I don't know what I'm gonna do, man. I, I, I... Put, I put a lot of energy and time into this relationship, man. And if I find out that Amber is cheating on me, I'm just, I'm probably gonna lose it. I'm probably, I don't, I don't know, man. They, they had to put me in a mental hospital or something. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Cheaters detectives continue surveillance of the suspect's workplace. Butler leaves work. The suspect travels to a quiet cemetery. Butler waits a few minutes. Eventually, the man from previous surveillance arrives. Butler gives him a massive hug. The man joins her in her vehicle. A quick smoke later, Butler and her partner get out feeling pretty mellow. The man, now identified as L.J. Bryant, wraps his arm around Butler. The two survey gravestones. As they stroll to the graveyard, cheaters agents note Bryant does his best homage to Michael Jackson's thriller, which makes Butler laugh the couple finds a spot to lay down a blanket. The pair finishes their smoke. Then, they get down to the business at hand. Sometime later, after the gravesite desecration, Butler and Bryant walk back to the vehicles. The suspect and her companion kiss each other goodbye. Bryant leaves. Butler returns to the daycare center. Cheater's private investigators stay glued to the suspect. Butler leaves Bryce's house. The suspect drives to a neighborhood park. Bryant waits on her. The suspect and her beau find a park table and bench. The couple sit down to cuddle while they smoke. After a few minutes, Butler and Bryant go back to the SUV. Cheater's agents watch the pair climb into the back seat. After some time, both get out, disheveled and half-dressed. Butler puts her coat on, and Bryant rearranges his attire. After a few moments, Butler says goodbye to Bryant with an intimate kiss. As her companion leaves, Butler gleefully runs around the back of the SUV. The suspect and her companion get into their respective vehicles. Bryant pulls away. As Butler leaves, returning to Bryce's house, Cheaters makes preparations for a meeting with Bryce. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that the suspect's deceitful activities come to light, 
Cheaters reaches out to Bryce. Frustrated and suspicious, Bryce determines to face down the facts. Bryce, first thing I'd like to say is uh, thank you for coming out with us this evening. Are you ready to see what we've come up with, Bryce? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. All right. Someone with you got. Bryce, we begin our investigation outside of Amber's workplace. Do you recognize the spot? Yes, I do. We see Amber walk out of that daycare center where she works. She gets into her vehicle, Bryce. It doesn't seem like she's in a hurry. Yeah, she ran out of there pretty quickly. Gets into her vehicle and drives to a cemetery of all places. A short time later, a silver real? sedan pulls up. She runs out of the car with her arms in the air and oh, jumps Oh, now they on. all in love. Now they all lovey-dovey now. Now they're a couple now, right? Okay. In a cemetery. Okay. They, okay. they sit in her vehicle for a little bit. They come out. She's kind of got some, you know, small looking eyes. She's smiling a lot. Why does he keep hugging her? That's not your girl, dude. Not only that, I see something in his hand. I don't know if that's a cigar. He's blowing out a lot of smoke. They're passing it back and forth. Whoa. But she lays down a blanket. They lay down together, getting high in the middle of the in cemetery. In the cemetery? And then he begins to kiss all over easy? his girl. Wow. Wow. They finish up. He has the audacity to walk her back to her vehicle, slaps her on the behind before giving her a hug and a kiss goodbye. Wow, bro, I can't believe this, man. Wow, dude, I can't believe this, man. That's my homeboy, dude, and you... Man, I can't believe this, bro. I understand this I is really hard to this, believe, bro. but you know what? Seeing is believing, and this is 100% per your request what we got for you. After they finish up at the cemetery, she leaves, he leaves, and she returns to her work. On this day of our investigation, Bryce, we are outside of her residence. When she walks out, she receives a phone call from you. What mm -hmm. you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if what she says right here is true. Hello? Yo, what's up? Hey, babe, what you doing? I'm good. What you got going on? Um, I'm about to go and um, get my hair done. Now, it's for the road. Why no sense so you going to come through? No, I can't right now. Maybe, like, you're probably going to take me about maybe five hours. So I got I to gotta wait five hours to get some of time? Uh, well, um, you want me to get my hair done? I ain't really worried about that right now, though. Well, I already made my appointment, so, I mean, I'll be over there as soon as I'm done, though. All right. So she yeah. leaves for the hair appointment. I remember that conversation. So then, after the hair appointment, she drives straight to a park. And who's standing there? LJ. So like she got a damn hat done to me. So she lied to you. They go to a park. He sparks one up in broad daylight in a public park. They tripping with this. Oh. She's smoking. He's smoking. Indulging in cannabis purely in public, broad daylight. A short time for later. Real, LJ. For real, LJ. He escorts her into the back of her Suburban. No, 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 no. They get in together. No, 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 Bro, tell me they did not have sex in the back of that truck. I can't say what they did. Please tell me they did not have sex in the back of that truck. But look, Bryce, LJ's fixing his clothes. No, She's putting her jacket back on. No, man, no. Wow. I think you have a couple things to say to both of them. I got a whole bunch of things to say to both of them. They quickly hug each other, give a couple kisses. LJ gets into his vehicle and he leaves. She gets into her vehicle and leaves and returns home. Suck ass. We actually know exactly where they are right now. What? Let's go get him. All right, Let's go get him. Just so you know, they're at that same cemetery where they were, desecrating that grave, indulging in the cannabis. If we get on the road right now, we can confirm together. Are you ready? Yes, I'm gonna leave his ass there. Come on, let's, right let's this, go get him. Right this way. Let's Come do on. it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right there, right there. Yeah! Wow, 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 yeah, wow, baby! Hey, 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 yeah, hey, What's up, fool? What's up, hey, fool? Hey, hey, what's up, fool? Hey, Kevo, it's about to go down. I'm gonna put these hands on your bitch ass. Yeah, why are you doing what is Bryce? Right? What's going on? Oh, no. Coming up next, the confusion. Just so you know, they're at that same cemetery where they were, desecrating that grave, indulging in the cannabis. Yeah, wow, yeah, wow. Yeah, bitch. Hey, What's up? Hey, What's up? Hey, What's up? Hey, What's up? Hey, I'm gonna put these hey, hands on your bitch No! I put my money with my mouth in, homeboy. We're gonna see what the hell is this? No, what is no, it? No. What is all this? Don't, don't. What is all this? Bro? What is all this? Where y'all get all this from? What is this? What is this? That's not, for, that's not for tobacco, Bro. is it? No. What's up in there? What's that? Hey, hey. What's all this? Hey, homie. Huh? 
What's all hey, this? What's all this? Hey, man. What's all this? Huh? Hey, yeah, they ain't having a party tonight. Party's hey, over. Party's over. Party's over. Did he just throw my weed? Yeah. He just throw my weed? Yeah. At a, Party's hey, over. At a cemetery? Party's over. All things you aside, we know. Party's over. You just talking about weed? Party's over. Party's over. Party's over. Party's over. Party's over. Party's over. This is over. I'm Clark Gable with Peace. the show Cheaters. The reason why I'm here is because your boyfriend called us because he couldn't get answers from what was going He's on with you. He's never at home. That's why he didn't get answers. I understand that, but... And I kept asking him to participate Same in things man. that I want to do. And he why does it. He does. What type of things we, did you face? want to do? He won't do like the fetishes. Like he will come out to the cemetery. He'll set it up nice for me. He's never at home. You don't think you don't you don't think it's a you don't think it's a little bit of a desecration to people's gravesites? No, this is like a fetish. Come get your chill out. You come get your chill. Take a no, you take a you, you come take get a your don't sit up here and act like that on the TV. The reason why I'm Don't asking like LJ that. is because he said you guys have been friends for a while. He need to, he need to ride out. We ain't talked to him. Hey, how you hey. gonna do me like that, bro? What? For real? Man, look. For real? Dude. For real? LJ. Get for real? Come on. I'm telling you how to confide in you? Come on. For real? Come on. She for real? Been she been confiding in me, too. Out because she been you were at home, too. For real? For real? How you know I ain't at home? You ain't done with that. Amber, let me talk to you for a second. Like that, huh? That's how you do? Say, dude. For Get real? Up off me, man. You couldn't come and talk to me, man. Back up. Huh? Up. You couldn't come and holler at me, bro. Hey, man. For real? You couldn't come and holler at you, me. You act like this you over a chick. Mama, you act like this over a chick. That's yo. my bitch, man. That's my girl. What does you mean? For real? Say, it's a wrap, baby. It's a wrap. I seen everything. I seen the video. I seen everything. What video? It's a wrap. You really want me to pull out the video? I mean. You been having these people follow us? Are you serious? Yeah. What the hell you mean? Yeah. I get my stuff. Oh, he yeah. been having these people follow us. Oh, now you can follow like, like, like how you, yeah. you said, he just anticipates the world. Is this you guys? If you your girl, you wouldn't have to worry about saying that. Are you that. serious? Oh, 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 oh. Who do you think you're talking to? Who do you think you're talking to, bro? Who do you think you're talking to? Hey, dog, you should have been taking care, care of your motherfucking girl, dude. I mean, you laid a blanket down. You guys also went out, ate together. I mean, what? This is never home. I mean, he, and don't act rap. like you are just innocent. It's a rap. It's a rap. Don't act like you innocent. It's a wrap. It's a rap. You lost the best thing you ever had. Party's over. Okay. Party's right. over, sucker. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right, I got you. Listen, just, huh? can we just get out of here? No, we can't get out of here. Why? We can't get out of here. This is what you want to be. How these this, people. This is what you want to be. Can I help y'all with something? What, what y'all need to go have that dude over there. Go handle my man over there. He all upset like that. Do you know Fat Boys is in? And you finna give away all this for that sucker? Girl, please. You just lost out. You lost the best thing ever happened to you. Look this way so you can see so the I best thing ever happened to you ever had. So I wasn't the only one doing the wrong I'm things? I'm done talking like, to her. What do you think I'm he was doing? The main thing I'm just trying to get out of, out of you is, you know, your side of the story and also why this had to happen. I think it's important to work it out, but I don't think he's in the same neck of the woods. Hey, dude with the camera. Hey, man, yo, stop. Hey, man, done with them lies, man. Stop listening to her, man. We're, I'm ready to go, man. It's, it's time to go. All right, let's we're, load we're up. We're done with her. We're done with her. Load up. Did somebody let her use right our phone? Right this way. Hey, you need to use somebody's phone so you can get home? No, Watch I'm going home with you. No, you're not going home with yes, me. Yes, I am. Nope. Yes, it's I am. It's a two-seat up here with my seat. Yes, I Ain't am. Ain't no room for you. Load up. Bryce. Okay, you, you've given them a show. You've done what you need. This Look, isn't. You, oh, no, 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 no. But, honey, you the one put on the show, and I seen you. Matter of fact, you was good. You a good actor. You a damn good actor. I thought you was in love with me. You was acting I the whole time. I am in love no, with you're you. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. You put, on a, you put on a hell of a show. Hell of a show. And, hey, be careful on your way home. I don't even want to know how you're getting there. Be careful on your way home. Look out for the repo man, though. All right, we got to go. Right. Load up, guys. Everybody in, everybody in, everybody in. Disturbed by the absence of feelings from the suspect, Bryce owns up to his own emotions. Later, Cheater shows you what he does to deal with the issues. But next, Liz Winters returns to Cheater Studios to maintain that she is now a one-man's woman. I thought Tobin was gone on a business trip and uh, whenever they busted in, it was 
very surprising. I think I was in shock for about a good five minutes after it happened, and it was just 20 people filled into my living room, and you know, there's popcorn all over the floor. A hole gets put in the wall. There's people asking me questions. Travis and Tobin are fighting. It was really rough to deal with. I apologize. What are you doing in my house? Oh, I'm in your house because boyfriend found out that you were cheating on him. So what exactly is going on here? You have him in the house that you share with your boyfriend. I'm going to destroy you. It's about, what are you even doing here? Because I live here, dude. I don't even want you here. What are you doing in my house? My house. I live here, too. Yeah, but it's my House. Yeah, and you got this piece of crap here snug up on our couch. Oh, what the hell? Piece of crap. Look yeah, who's talking. Crap. Look who's talking. Look who's cheating. You are the cheating liar. I should have been more honest with Tobin. Everything happened with Travis so fast, and I just, I put it off, and I just felt so guilty, and I knew how he would feel, how Tobin would feel once he found out, and I just dug myself deeper and deeper into a hole that I knew wasn't going to be easy to get out of. And I feel really bad because no one should ever get let on by anybody. It's not right. I'll just get my stuff, and you can have y'all's little thing. Oh, you can come all, back all, later to get your stuff. You're not getting your on. stuff with all these people in my house. You're not going to tell me to leave? Yeah, I can tell you to leave whenever the fuck I want. It's my tell house. Me, what are you going to do? That ain't going to make me. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, get all security with me. Well, come, come here. Come on. I got I, 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 wallpaper, but yeah, come on. You feel like you've gotten everything that you've wanted? No, I want my stuff. I mean, I want to come back here. I called Travis and apologized to him for involving him in all of that and kicking him out of the house. And we met up and we started going on more and more dates and just getting more familiar with us, each other and it just kind of evolved into a relationship that's really tight-knit and close and I think I've changed because I realized the kind of pain that it put everyone through and I don't ever want to do that again. I just want to stay true to one person, it's Travis now. So. Disgusted and angered with his girlfriend and his friend, Bryce Paul makes the ultimate resolution. Bryce cuts off all contact with both parties. When questioned by Cheaters producers, busted suspect Amber Butler exclaims, Bryce is so boring. I was just trying to spice things up, but he's too dull for me. LJ Bryant only says to Cheaters producers, bros before hoes, yo. Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Markel Weber, a personal assistant disturbed by his boyfriend's neglectful ways. Concerned about unanswered questions, Markel makes up his mind to contact cheaters in his hunt for the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. When I first met Elton, you know, he was very nice, he was sweet. He would take me out on dates, or I'd take him out on dates, um, call me all the time, text messages, hey, how you doing, love you, boo, you looking good, send me a picture, I'll respond with one. But now, it's kind of reverting back to my past people to where I feel like I give, 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 and now he doesn't want to hold hands, he doesn't want to call me back, and he doesn't want to see me as often as I want to see him, and it's these same basic excuses that I don't want to hear anymore. Elton Smith, age 25, a code writer accused of introducing malware into his relationship. Briefed with details of the case, a cheater squad stakes out the suspect's residence. After some time, an unknown male arrives and approaches Smith's apartment. Cheater's detectives spot both Smith and his unknown suitor leaving the apartment. Covertly followed by cheaters, the suspect and his mysterious man drive to a neighborhood bar and grill. Nonchalantly, the pair enter the building. However, Smith holds hands with his date, and the two enjoy their meal and each other. 
After they finish their sumptuous feast, they leave the restaurant sometime later. I think that Elton is keeping a lot of secrets from me, mainly because of his phone. You know, his phone is constantly ringing. His text messages are always going off. And it's been times where I've been asleep and I can kind of feel him moving in the bed, like the fingers moving from text. And I'm like, okay, it's two o'clock in the morning. I, I don't want to sound like a bugaboo or something, but I just feel like something isn't right. The reaction that I get from Elsa when I do question him about his phone is that he says that, you know, it's, it's nothing going on. I have nothing to worry about. Um, it's work related. Um, it's his mom, but I just figured, I feel like, you know, your mom living in a different time zone, so she's asleep. It's, it's three or four o'clock in the morning their time, so there shouldn't be a reason why your mom is texting you, and you shouldn't have to hide that. Smith and his dinner date cruise across town, tailed by the cheater's mobile unit. The couple arrive at the suspect's residence. The suspect escorts his beau to the man's vehicle, whereby the two hug for quite a while. They share a few deep kisses, and then, finally sated, the suspect turns and heads away for the night. So for Elton's birthday, I decided to buy him some Beyonce tickets because we haven't been spending a lot of time together. So I came over to surprise him. I was like, hey, I got these tickets for you. And then he kind of looked at me and shrugged his shoulders like, oh, OK. And that really kind of pissed me off. So at that point, I knew someone's right. So you know, I spent all my time and my money searching for this, and you don't even give a damn. Um, and lately, there, there hasn't been any, any talk about us being together or continue things or trips or, you know, or anything. But at this point, I realize that there is something going on. If I do see him and there is another person and he gives me these whack-ass excuses, you're definitely going to need some type of security because it's going to be on. Keeping the stakeout engaged, Cheater's operators wait until evening when the suspect emerges. Smith hops into his vehicle and drives off. Unaware of the trailing Cheater's detective, Smith drives across town and arrives at a restaurant. As soon as the suspect parks, the man from previous surveillance, now identified as Justin Parsons, approaches. Smith greets Parsons with a hug and a kiss. The duo enter the restaurant and head for the patio. After some time, Smith and his fresh boy toy leave. At the vehicle, the suspect and his companion hug goodbye, and as Parson walks away, Smith drives away, returning home for the evening. Upon arrival at the suspect's residence, Cheater's operatives observe Smith emerging from his apartment with Parsons and a tiny dog. The lovers get into Smith's car and drive away. The twosome come to a park. Finding a parking spot, Smith and Parsons get out and proceed to walk the pooch. The suspect and his date spend quite a while hiking the path around the park. After a long jaunt, the men return to their vehicle and drive back to the neighborhood. The suspect makes a pit stop at a nearby movie machine. Smith caresses Parsons' shoulder as they choose a flick to watch. Back at the car, the two share a few kisses and an intimate hug. The suspect motors his charge back to his apartment complex. With the dog in one hand and his lover's hand in the other, Smith escorts Parsons into his residence. When Parsons leaves, Cheater's agents wrap up the case and put a bow on it. Coming up, the confrontation. Gathering all evidence of the suspect's duplicity, Cheaters calls on Markell to review the case facts. Setting aside all apprehension, Markell agrees to meet in order to view the truth. Markell, first thing I want to say is thank you for coming out today. I understand you've been going through a lot. Well, as you know, Markell, we have conducted our investigation and we have come up with some findings. That's why you're here. Okay. My question for you is, are you prepared to see them? I'm ready. All right. We begin our investigation. As our detectives follow Elton's car, we see him arrive at a restaurant. That's when this unknown male approaches his vehicle. Do you recognize that guy that he's with? No. You've never seen him in your life? Never. Never. Continuing on, 
Elton gets out and they embrace with a hug. That's when the two of them walk together into the restaurant, they sit outside on the patio, and begin to share some drinks. I'm just taking it to my favorite spot. Well, in the middle of their drinking, Elton receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you remember this. Well, continuing on, Markel, after finishing up the phone call, a while later, they exchange a few words. Elton looks a little upset. And they go out to the parking lot and proceed to get into different vehicles, and he returns home for the evening. Oh my God. Continuing on with our investigation, Markel, on this day, we are outside of Elton's apartment. Strangely enough, as our detective waits, the two of them emerge, and that unknown male has a dog in his hand. After they leave the residence, our detectives follow them as they pull into the parking lot and arrive at a red box machine. They pick out a movie, the two of them go over to Elton's vehicle, and they embrace like they've known each other for a very long time. They seem very comfortable, playful, laughing. I could see that gentleman smiling. A little bit too comfortable. After finishing up, they walk inside with the movie in hand and the dog in the other. At this point in time, Markel, we have an exact location on the both of them. They are at Narazzo. It's a private karaoke lounge. Mm -hmm. So if we get on the road right now, we have a great chance of intercepting them and confronting them. Are you ready to do this? I'm ready. Let's right, go. Right this way, sir. Cheaters. Is this you? Gable with cheaters. I've been following you because your boyfriend, Markel. Boyfriend. Yeah, boyfriend. He's been together for a year. He didn't tell you that? No, he didn't say. All he said was that they wasn't even talking anymore. Coming up next, the conclusion. Both of them, they are at Narazzo. It's a private karaoke lounge. Stupid bitch. I've been following you because your boyfriend. Boyfriend. This bitch no way to He didn't tell you that? No. So you know not talking to that bitch. Hey. <laughs> hey, bitch, you need to get off me. So you had no idea. What was your name again, sir? I'm Justin. Justin, so what exactly happened? And Elton, what happened, man? What you mean, what happened? What the? With you, with, with you and this gentleman, what happened with you and your boyfriend? You guys have been together for a year. What happened, man? I mean, you got a couple Say friends nothing. here. How are you guys doing? Hey. <laughs> These people on my face. I'll get them out of your face. Will you talk to me for just for one minute, man? On. What happened exactly? What, what happened, man? For real, Markel? Come on. 
Relax, relax, relax. All right, listen, I got him out of the room. Talk to me for one second. I'm just asking you questions, man. I'm not here to make you upset. I'm just working because your boyfriend was worried. He had some instincts and he called us. That's why I'm here. This isn't about pissing you off. He, he, he no disrespect. Together. We ain't been together for like months. So what happened? I thought y'all were broken up a long time ago. We've been broke up. I don't know what this really? is. Really? Bitch, you crazy. Why the f*** Bitch, you crazy. Bitch, you crazy. Why the f Bitch, you crazy? Really? Stop. Really? Stop. Really? Stop. Stop. Instead of you two fighting like this, hey, let's just for a second exchange words. Exchange words, not punch. It's not worth it. You guys have. Heard... I'm not with him. All right, hey, let's go outside. Let's go outside so we can talk. Come on, you guys. Let's go. So, Justin, you had no idea? No, I had no idea. What if you walked in here and he was doing the same thing? You know you'd be upset. I'm not with him. You need to okay. talk to him. Just why? That's your problem right there. You need to go talk Markel, to him. we broke up. You know that. We didn't break up. You know we ain't been together. We ain't been together for months. What the f you think this is? Bitch, I've been calling you. Because your ass crazy, I don't want you. We still been together. I found somebody new. I found somebody else. Also, his name is Justin. You okay with this too? You no, know, I didn't even know about this. He Come told on. me y'all broke up months ago. Come on, we don't, don't touch me. Come on, we don't need to don't touch me. No, bitch, I said bitch. don't touch me. What? I will bitch, I'll you up. I swear. All he's asking for is a simple answer, man. Is why? I gave y'all an answer. What the y'all want to know? Get out of my face! Hey, man, the camera, dude. Look, look. Touch the camera, no more. Look. You better get your little friend over there. Shut the up. That ain't my friend. I don't, don't even know them. Don't hit me, Markel. We ain't been together. Just talk like, hey, like two gentlemen. Been talk together. it out. What? Why you got these cameras out here? I still got my stuff at your house. Do you think? So you just why not say nothing to me? About you need the move. This ain't about you. It is about me because apparently he didn't tell none of us this was going on. Yeah, let that break. Justin, let's go. I'm not going with you. I'm telling you. You didn't tell me this. Me and you've been talk. together for like three months already. Exactly. You've been together for like three months. Yeah. That year, bitch. We ain't been together no year. You crazy, bitch. I mean, you played two different people here. One that you've been together for with a year. Another one you lied to for three months. Where your car? So now you don't run away now. Kind of stuff I'm talking about, just walking away from every damn thing now. Bitch, get out of my car. Bitch, it's mine now. Get your ass out of my car. Get your Come on, get out of the car. Man, well, I'm just letting you know, dude. I'm not here to piss you off or anything. I'm just trying to it's get you. Done, I'm it's just trying to get you your answers because you're being played by somebody who is with someone else, and it's one thing to do that if you tell them that you're broken up. But you know what? He didn't do that. I see. That's why I'm saying this is this is this is this is kind of what I'm talking about. So how many other people have have there been? How many have there been? Ain't on your business. Call their ass up. Put them on shows. Whatever show this is. This is cheaters. That's the only reason why we're cheated. here is because he hired us to find you. Yes, I you cheated. did. Yes, you did. I ain't cheat on you, bitch. You just spit. I'm Be out. mad. I'm out. I'm not mad at all. Be mad. Look at you, though. Look at Be you. Be mad. You don't want to up now, so what? Turn them feelings off. Feelings already off. He made Turn them feelings off, off, bitch. Don't worry about it. You can have that. You all right? Post-confrontation, Markel realizes his need for some alone time. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals how Markel copes with his decision. But now, Cheaters revisits Mindy Madden, who caught her husband splashing around with another woman. Mindy discloses all that has happened since that chaotic confrontation. When I walked in or around the pool area to where they were at, at the hot tub, I saw her I recognized her as one of his new Facebook friends, and I was furious. It just continued to grow. 
I felt like this monster just came out of me. What the bloody hell are you doing? Get your ass I can't hear. Get in here right now. What the What the hell are you doing? Oh, get, get, get out of my face right now. What are you talking What are you doing? What are you doing? Who is she? What do you mean? I don't know. I've seen the videos. I contacted a lawyer the day after the bust and started the process for the divorce paperwork. And as soon as Blaze was served his paperwork, he became his old self again. You know, oh babe, we can't, we can't get divorced. We've been together 22 years. And I thought, are you kidding me right now? No, I'm done. That was it. And I have not allowed him to pursue me at all. You know what? Take her home. Because this I'm ain't your so home. Sorry. You keep him, baby. I don't want He's him. He's yours. I don't want him either. I don't blame you. you pay I, attention I don't to blame you one iota. If you pay attention to Thank God. Bro. Open eyes. Get him out. Peace. Bye. Watch your backs. Peace. Peace to this. Two of them. Mm. It took me about three or four months to get back to a peaceful mindset. I remember when I first came here, I talked about struggling with that work-life balance. And I'm finding that in my life today. I, I'm not so workaholic mode. You know, I'm able to spend some time by myself and with my friends and do some things outside of work and enjoy my life. And I'm feeling really good about that. So I can see good things on the horizon for me. Following the chaos of the confrontation, Markel Weber makes the decision to break things off with the suspect. Markel speaks to cheaters. He said, it hurt at the time, but it wasn't all bad. After all, I did get to meet Justin, and we've been hanging out quite a bit. Markel insists that he's only become friends with the suspect's companion. If it becomes something more, he says, he'll accept it. But for now, Markel plans on taking things slow. Conscious of his betrayal, the suspect, Elton Smith, admits to Cheater's producers that he wants more than what Markel could offer. Smith states the next time he runs into a similar situation, he'll be more open and forthcoming about his status. The companion, Justin Parsons, declines to comment further on the case to Cheater's. Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Nikki Schultz is receiving an odd neglect from her man. Unable to put a finger on the problem, Nikki comes to the professionals at Cheaters to get her questions answered. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Since day one, Dustin has joked about, like, since day one that he wanted to marry me and he knew that I was the one. And now, like, we hardly ever say I love you. And it's, it's very upsetting that we don't have this, this passion that we used to have anymore. And I mean, three years has gone by and it's just, it's tearing me apart that it's not the, the same Dustin. Dustin Walsh, age 22. A stockroom manager suspected of shelving his girlfriend and restocking another relationship. Briefed on the suspect's schedule, Cheater's intel units surround the suspect's place of employment. After a few hours, investigators spot their mark exiting his work. Walsh walks way down the street to arrive at a restaurant. An unknown woman waits and he joins her at a table. The two make small talk for a bit Things seem innocent enough as the pair get up to leave. However, cheaters operators note that all is not what it seems as the suspect holds his companion's hand while they stroll away. He's been very selfish lately and he 
doesn't share the car, leaves me at home stranded. He's just been very secretive and it just makes me wonder, like, what is he really doing and why does he have to keep me away and he can't be honest with me? We can't even have any conversations together where he's, he doesn't, he just shuts me out with anything I say. I try to talk to him and our conversations go nowhere. He gives me short answers and it's like he doesn't want to talk to me or anything to do with me anymore. Walsh and his mystery lady walk to a garden store. They amble inside and around the business and check out the various items. After a short while, the two leave the store. Walsh lovingly wraps his arm around his femme fatale and escorts the unknown woman to her vehicle. The lady gets in. Walsh shuts the door. As his date drives off, Walsh heads back to work, ending this day of surveillance. We used to be best friends and talk about everything, all our life stories, what we wanted to do as we grow older. And I just, I wanted to be with him forever. And I just don't feel like he's giving me the same love and has the same compassion like he used to. I don't know what's gonna go on after I find out if something is going on. And I just, I want answers. Cheaters deploys a squad of detectives to the home Nikki shares with Walsh. Sometime later, the suspect leaves his home. Covertly tailed by a cheater's mobile unit, Walsh drives across town to a bar. Inside the bar, the suspect meets the woman from previous surveillance. Now identified only as Janine, the illicit pair act overly friendly, touching each other as they converse. A bit later, the suspect and his paramour leave the bar. Janine gives Walsh a quick kiss goodbye before the two walk to their respective vehicles. Cheaters investigators surround the suspect's employment. At the end of his work shift, Walsh gets into his car to leave. Trailed by Cheater's surveillance team, the suspect drives to a bar. Walsh meets up with Janine in the parking lot, greeting her with kisses and hugs. The two enter the building and grab a table on the crowded patio. Janine strokes Walsh's hair as they enjoy their evening. Finally quitting the bar, Walsh walks his companion hand in hand to her vehicle. The suspect passionately kisses Janine goodbye and the two lovers say goodnight. Cheater's operatives wrap up the case for a despondent Nikki. Coming up, the confrontation. Collating all evidence pointing to infidelity, Cheater summons Nikki to a client review. Courageously, Nikki decides to view the tapes and discovers the truth. Nikki, I just want to say I appreciate you coming out today. I understand that this has kind of been a long week for you. As per your request, we did watch Dustin for quite some time and compiled a lot of evidence. My question for you is, are you prepared to see that? Yes. All right. On this day of our investigation, Nikki, we are outside of Dustin's workplace. Sometime later, Dustin emerges and he walks across the street to a restaurant. That's when we see him meet this woman with the sunglasses on. A while later, she stands up, so does Dustin, and they walk outside holding hands. They then walk over to a store, they go inside, and they begin to look around at various items. We see antiques in there, some lamps, and sometime later we see them emerge, and Dustin puts his arm around her. He then walks her over to her vehicle, she gets inside, he shuts the door, and sends her on her way. Nikki, on this day of our investigation, as our detectives follow Dustin, he arrives at a bar and meets up with that same female from the day before. We see them converse at the bar. She leans in and kisses him on the cheek, and he smiles. While they're inside, Dustin receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you remember this. Hey. Hey, what's up? Where did you go? Um, I, I'm actually at the 
at the bar with uh, Aaron. He's Mark. You just took off and didn't even tell me where you're going? Well, I got a quick phone call. I assume that I just better go. When do you think you're going to be back? I'm just having a quick drink here. Okay, well, thanks for telling me. Will you text me when you leave? How much longer do you think you'll be? Uh, probably about another 15, 20 minutes. Okay, well, thanks, I guess. Bye. After finishing up the phone call with you, that girl walks back outside and they embrace with a hug and a pretty long kiss. So Nikki, Dustin obviously has been lying to you about a lot of different things. You've seen that, you know that. At this point in time, we have an exact location of where they are. They're by a lake. So if we get in the vans, get rolling on the road, get there as soon as possible, we can confront them. Are you ready to go get the truth from Dustin and find out what's really going on? I'm ready. All right, right this way, please. There's our detective right there. Let's go ahead and stop and see what he's got to say. This is a really big lake, wow. How's it going, man? Doing well. All right, what so you got? all you guys got to do is take a left right here. All right. Go down to where those two cars are. Okay. Park the vehicles. Everybody needs to get out. Once you get down there, I'll meet you down. All right. And we'll go right in from there. All right, great. All right, thank you. Thanks Appreciate a lot, it. detective. Let's do our best to be quiet. Watch your step. Right this way. Come on. Oh my God, Dustin! What the? Nikki, what the I'm, are you doing? I'm working. What is this bull? You're working? I'm just. Uh, I'm here. Out here by the lake. Um. Who's, uh, who's this? this Janine. Hi. What's your name? Um, Janine. Janine. I'm yeah, Clark Gable with Cheaters. Hey. Uh, the reason why I'm here is because what is that this, is, Dustin? That is Dustin's fiance of three years. Were you aware of that? I had no clue, actually. Wow. Hey, did you know this is my fiance right here? No, I'm sorry, babe. No, that's what the hell, Dustin? I, 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 Dustin, sorry. did you lie to this girl and then lie to your fiance? What did he tell you exactly? How did you guys meet? Uh, we work together. You work together? Yeah. Okay. But he never oh. mentioned that he had a girlfriend. Oh. Dick. So you lied, you lied to your fiance and you lied to this coworker of yours. Coming up, the conclusion. At this point in time, we have an exact location of where they are. They're by a lake. Oh my God, Dustin, what the? That is Dustin's fiance. Did you lie to this girl and then lie to your fiance? Why would you do this to people? No, You're no, engaged. I love you. I love you. Then what is this? No, what is this? Are you guys spending some time together? <laughs> what is this? No. You guys are going to restaurants. You guys are going shopping. We I work mean, together. It's, ju it's just work. This is bull. No. Do you kiss people that just work? No, I didn't mean to do this to you. I'm sorry. You didn't mean to do this. You didn't mean for her to play with your hair and for you to kiss her, for you to lie to me. What? What is this? It's a lot of romance for someone that's a coworker. We're, we're just, we're, we're really good friends. That's yeah, it. Yeah, really I'm, good friends. What the hell, I, Dustin? No, I'm Why didn't you ever mention you had a fiance? What's I'm, wrong with you? I'm, You're I'm, sick. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a baby. You're pretty sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, you're going to go in the Baby, I'm sorry. No, you. I just want you to know the gravity yes. of, of what he's done to not only his fiance and his future, but also lying to you as a human being and as a, you seem like a very nice girl. Yeah, I get it. So you never told her that you had a fiance or anything? No. I mean, you should go clean off your dirty sins in that water, man. I'd walk a little farther out there, maybe. How do you feel about yourself right now, Dustin? Do you want to apologize maybe to your That's fiance? Right, you feel you're such a dog. I'm sorry, Nikki. Don't tell me a damn thing. You, I, I'm, I'm sorry. God. I didn't mean to do any of this. I didn't mean to. That's all you have to say. You didn't mean to do anything. You mean to hurt her. That didn't start out like this. How did it start out then? We just went around and had a couple drinks. It was a shift. I'm sorry. Do you normally the girls whenever you're in a meeting? Like, your, like relationships? Oh. You know, that's expensive stuff, man. That's going to cost you uh, a pretty penny. A lot more than the dates that you've been taking this girl on. Like, why would you cheat on her? She's, like, a lot cooler than you are, apparently. Oh, my God. Sorry, girl. He's, he's an ass. 
So he's never once said anything to do you, no. anyone to work at work? That I know of at least. God, I'm so sorry. I can't do this. Well, can you talk to your fiance then? Maybe. He's Baby. flirty, I guess. Baby. Oh, Talk right. to me. I, I gotta hear everything from you. I need to get your side of the story. Talk That's to me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for this to go this far. I didn't mean to go out with her. I didn't mean to lie to you. I'm I'm so sorry. So Janine, you need to tell me all about all about this. So he's very flirtatious, acts like he he's in an open relationship, and he works with you and he yeah, pretty like much used that to nothing that he's ever like, pointed to her that he had a Fiance, he doesn't even wear a ring. Do you love me? I do love you. When you love someone, you you tell the truth and you talk to them. If there's a problem, talk to me. It didn't mean to happen. I'm sorry. You only understand how bad that hurt me. Seeing those videos and you lying to me on the phone. You're an ass. Go tell him to his face. I mean, I don't think he really takes it seriously. He's groveling, so I guess that's good enough to see. I can't believe it came down to this. I, I just want to go back home. We can talk about it. We can, so, we can make things better. So we're supposed to live our life like this didn't happen? Are we supposed to grow from this? Like, laugh at it like 10 years down the road. You remember that one time we were all cheaters? Piece of I, I just, No. I don't know what I can say, babe. No. I didn't. Go. Get out of my face. Dustin, give me my dick. Give me that. You stupid. I can't believe you did this. Hey, what do you want to do? This is up to you. What do you want to do? I, I need time. You want to go tell him how you feel and then get out of here? Yeah. All right, where do you go? I'm sorry, girl. I have no idea. Out of my face, dude. Get out. Let's go talk to him, give him an ultimatum, and then we'll go. Dustin! Just give me your keys. What the f in your car? Like hell I'm gonna stay here with you. You're an ass. How can you be Beyonce? Like almost made vows to her. The hell? Babe. I got something for you. I didn't mean it. Can we just go home? Talk see, about it there with all these, all these screen cameras. screen you gave me? Here, take it back. Keep it. I want you to put it around your small little penis and f*** off. Babe. Hey, one other. Dustin, why would you do this to your fiance, man? Like, what was even the point? What was even the point? There's no point. First. Dumbass dude. I know there's better people out there and someone that's not gonna treat me like this. So Did he give you that ring back? I took it back. Well, if you take him back, that's here. your choice, but you can always pawn the ring and make some money. Sounds like a good idea. Following the confrontation, Nikki faces an extreme decision. At the end of the show, Cheaters updates you on the repercussions of her choice. But first, Joseph Tyler comes forward to give his side of the story surrounding the time he was caught red-handed with another man's girlfriend. You know, I was approaching my car, and you know what I'm saying, and me and Dee are walking together. All of a sudden, you know, this mob of people with cameras run out. And there's, uh, you know, there's cameras and lights and boom sticks or whatnot. And it had it just been him, um, we could have talked about the situation like adults. It was definitely the cameras um, more than anything that that was the the most intrusive um, during the the whole experience. What's going on? What's going on, D? What the? Now you broke it. D, no. What's going on? What's going on? Hey, 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 hey! I'm not talking. I'm not talking to you, man. Hey, 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 like back up off of me. Hey, I'm not talking to you, man. No. What's going on? I mean, no. Who the is this, dog? Uh, you can call no. me later. Like, no. who is this? Uh, That's her boyfriend of six years. Her boyfriend? I, I'm a yeah. dude. I thought uh, we all no, were talking to you. Hey, bro. Uh, hey, bro. Uh, hey, man. Man, I need you. 
face. But as far as uh, Desmond was concerned, uh, you know, things kind of got heated, but I, I didn't ever figure he was a threat. He was just so small. You know, he was a little guy. He looked like a little little chihuahua just kind of nipping at you or whatever. But, you know, I really didn't take it much past that. Um, I, I think that he's just really delusional about, you know, his relationship and where he sees him and Dee going. Um, obviously, she doesn't feel that way that he does. Um, and, you know, to hear that they ain't slept together in months or what, whatnot, you know, I mean, at least that's what she's telling me. And, you know what I'm saying, he's still in love, but, I mean, you know, if love don't live there no more, you know what I'm saying, you just got to move around, you know what I'm saying? So I was trying to talk to him, you know what I'm saying, man to man, and just tell him, like, you know, it is, it's not what you think it is. Um, and, you know, you just got to kind of deal with that, you know. You can don't wear your heart on your sleeve and nothing like that, but, you know what I'm saying, you just got to, Move on and let that go. Keep your hands off me, Doug, man. Bro, you better back up, dog. You better like, back up. Like, you don't even know me like that, little dude. dude. I don't give a man. Like, dog. Oh, ooh, you, you're a big, you're a big man? You're a big bro, man? You, big man? Bro, you, like, you big man? Bro, you better back up off me, man. Bro, back hey, off me, dog. Like, you don't even know me like that, son. Man, you. You don't know me. Oh, uh, you know me and D are cool right now. Uh, you know, cur currently, you know, we, we're seeing each other. I still keep my eyes open, you know. I ain't never blind or nothing. Um... And I think that everybody must do that in their relationship, you know. Keep your eyes open for for signs and stuff like that. But, you know, make sure you make yourself happy. And, uh, you can definitely make the other person happy. So, you know, I think people fall out of love all the time. Um, and sometimes that's just the way it is, uh, you know. Sometimes, you know, the love is gone. And, uh, you know, you can love somebody for an instant or a lifetime sometimes. But, you know, it's a flip of a coin sometimes on how long that lasts, you know. Following the confrontation, Nikki Schultz makes the hardest decision of her life. She moves out of the home she once happily shared with the suspect. Nikki claims as much as it hurt at the time, she realizes that she could not look herself in the mirror if she forgave the suspect. For his part in the affair, the suspect, Dustin Walsh, admits to cheaters producers that he broke Nikki's heart. The suspect says that he won't be making the same mistake anytime soon. The suspect's companion, Janine, declines to remark to cheaters about her role in the love triangle. The detective agency's private eyes on cheaters. Tiffany Crawford is a young woman determined to keep her family together. Concerned that her boyfriend spends too much time away from her and their children, Tiffany comes to Cheaters in her quest for the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. When we first got together, we were always going places, we were always doing things, and granted, this is before we had two children, but even after, you know, our firstborn, we were still doing things, we were still going out, and then now we just had our second, and it, it's all changed. It, he does, it seems like he just doesn't want to be around. He doesn't, he doesn't want that life anymore. You know, he tells me that, uh, that he works late, but also I know that he likes to play poker, and there's some poker nights that he'll go out and play with his friends, you know, uh, go out for the night, and I don't mind that. I understand, you know, guys need guy time, um, but it, I don't know, I just, there just seems to be something off. John, age 24, a windshield repairman accused of ignoring cracks in his relationship. Briefed with the particulars of the case, cheaters agents stake out the workplace of the suspect. Near sundown, John leaves work and drives to a seedy area of town. The suspect and his cheater's shadow arrive at a gentleman's club. John gets out of his car and walks into the strip club. He has cheated on the past. Um, you know, I've actually caught him before, and he is, you know, doing the same stuff, lying. Um, I'm getting blocked phone calls at night from other girls saying that, that he's been with them, that I need to leave him, that I'm stupid for staying. But when I ask him about these, then he says that they're just jealous that he's still with me after all this time. When I get these phone calls, to be honest, I get mad. 
I don't want to believe that what they're saying is true. Um, but on the other hand, why would they lie? You know, I think about it, why, why so many girls, why would they have tried to reach out to me and tell me if it wasn't true? I mean, how many girls could actually be that jealous? Inside, cheaters' operatives track the suspect as he stands at one of the stages talking to an unknown female. The woman and John converse as she shakes her rump on stage. After a long while, the suspect leaves the club with a spring in his step. John returns home, wrapping up this night's surveillance. I've forgiven John a lot in the past for a lot of different things that he's done, um, some of them being cheating. But if I find out that he's cheating on me again, I already told him, it's done, it's over. I can't, I can't go through this anymore. I can't put my kids through this anymore. They don't deserve it, and I don't deserve it. We deserve to have him there 100% with us full time, and he can't just be running around on me. Knowing the suspect's schedule, the cheater surveillance team continues the stakeout of John's workplace. Sometime in the afternoon, the suspect leaves work. John follows the same route he drove the day before, arriving back at the same strip club. The deceitful boyfriend goes into the establishment where he meets the same dancer, now identified only as Lucky. The entertainer gives the suspect a few lap dances. During his private show, Lucky grinds on John, kissing him passionately. After some time and quite a bit of money later, the suspect exits the dance bar. John returns home to a disconcerted Tiffany. As with previous days, cheaters investigators continue the stakeout of John's workplace. The suspect leaves this evening, headed down the same route back to the very same strip club he visited before. Meeting with Lucky seems to be a regular occurrence. Dropping more cash, John receives more lap dances from his regular lady. At some point in the evening, the twosome sit quietly, kissing at a booth. Lucky even walks John to the exit to give him a goodbye kiss. As the suspect heads home for the evening, Cheaters concludes the case for a betrayed Tiffany. Coming up, the confrontation. Documenting all lies and deceit, Cheaters calls on Tiffany to arrange for her to view the facts. With fear and anger building in her heart, Tiffany meets up with the intention of protecting her family and relationship. Tiffany, I know it's been kind of a long week. I'd like to say thank you for coming out this evening. I know you've been going through a lot with your relationship. But Tiffany, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. My question is, are you prepared to see what we have come up with? Yeah, I want to see it. All right. Tiffany, we begin our investigation outside of John's workplace. A while later, John emerges and he gets into his vehicle and leaves. As our detectives follow John, he turns into a strip club and he parks his car. That's when we see him get out, and John walks inside. That's when we see him conversing with this unknown female, and that's when things get a little bit more friendly than I'd say your average customer. He begins to kiss this woman. Tiffany, he gets a phone call when all this is going on. What you're about to hear is the audio from that. Tell me if you remember this. Hello? Hey, what are you doing? Nothing, uh, just playing a uh, game of poker with the boys. Watching uh, the basketball game, the finals. When are you gonna be home? As soon as we finish up this poker game, uh, I'll be leaving, and you know, I should be home in about 30 minutes. All right, well, uh, I'll leave in a little bit. Uh, you know how these poker games are. Love you. All right, love you too. See you soon. Bye. I'm pissed. After finishing up the phone call with you, he then returns inside the strip club, and some time passes and he leaves. That's when we see him return home for the evening. On this day of our investigation, Tiffany, we're outside of John's workplace. A while later, John emerges after what seems to be a long day. As our detectives follow John, he arrives at that same strip club, pulls in, parks his vehicle, and walks right back inside once again. That's when we see him receiving 
multiple lap dances in a VIP section of the strip club and kissing this unknown female. And before leaving, he kisses this female and smiles while walking out the door. He then nonchalantly walks outside, jogs to his car, and returns home for the evening. So seeing your money and your honey go to a strip club, I mean, how does that make you feel? It pisses me off. That is not what I work hard for. So Tiffany, after everything that you've just seen, my question for you is, are you ready to go confront John? Let's go. All right, well listen. I'm ready. We got Detective Gomez on scene. He's at that same strip club that they're at. It's called The Pearl. If we get in the vans and get to the location, we can bust them. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Right this way, please. Very, very back, okay? Watch your step. Ready? Together, sitting at a poker table. What the f are you doing with that ratchet ass bitch? We're done. All right. We're done. done. Go home with that. Bust it up. Hey, John. John, can I ask you a couple questions, man? You want to go outside for a minute? I just have a couple questions for you. Like what, man? My name is Clark Gable. I'm with Cheaters. I'm just here because your girlfriend hired us. Since you guys. I'm just asking for the truth, dude, that's all. Is that your is that your chick? Don't you have kids with her? It doesn't matter, man. Don't you love that woman? Something like that, but you look like a Clark Kent. Sorry, man. Dude, what if you came in here and you saw your girl doing this with another guy? Wouldn't that make you upset? Yeah, something like that. All right, so I just have a question. How did you meet this girl? Coming here, playing poker, having a good time. I understand that. That was it, man. Did one thing lead to the next, though? Because, I mean, I... have Multiple shots of you guys getting a little bit more comfortable. Okay. Kissing her and... The possibility of me getting with the stripper. Mm -hmm. Does that seem like butterflies and rainbows to you? Does Absolutely that seem not. like uh, I'm just going to cast a reel and reel it in? Does that seem like a possibility to you? I mean... That look, seems more fetched. It doesn't no, look far fetched right there. I was just having fun playing poker, doing me. I can understand that. What is she mad for? Putting her finger up in my face. Let me get at her. Let me get at her. Yeah, diamond is lucky in this bitch. 
Talk to you for a minute. Stop worrying about the cameras. Keep her. Okay. That's your, because that's your lady. Because you guys are my business. No, we're not. How the f would you Knock feel? Knock it off! How the f would you feel if you were just sitting Knock high and dandy by your goddamn Knock self? Knock it off! Would you feel? It's not about me how I feel. Stop. It's about how you feel. Disrespecting your girl. Feel? I don't know how you feel because I'm not in your position. Be that shit on the camera, man. How the f do you feel? Let's just go. How you feel, bitch? I feel good. I feel good, bitch. I feel good. Look what I got. Look what I got. Look what I got. Fuck you. bitch. You bitch. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, bitch. Look at me. Look at you. Look at me, bitch. Look at me, bitch. Look at me, ho. Look at me. Oh. Get in the van. I don't even have to touch you. You do it yourself. Yeah, got it. Back in the van. Dumbass bitch. Yeah. Heard that hoe, bitch. John, do you have anything to say about your girl or anything? About your kids? You guys don't know how real this is. You guys just think it's all make believe in front of cameras. It's not. This isn't make believe at all. It's just about fixing what happened with you and your girl. Okay, so how was all this LED lights? How was so this we can little. See going on? That's so we can Okay, hear sorry, you. I don't mean to hit it, but I just want to beat it like a damn Congo drum. Hey, I'm not getting out. anything from you, man. After the chaotic confrontation, Tiffany struggles to understand why the suspect would treat his family in such a callous manner. Later, Cheaters informs you on how she copes with her experience. Now, Brian Bass returns to give more details of the night he caught his girlfriend with another woman on Cheaters. Yeah, during the bust, all that was going through my mind was pretty much just how terrible the last few months had been and just how rough it was on me and how it just kind of tore me apart emotionally. Honestly, I, I uh, saw red at first and I was really, really upset and couldn't control my anger a little bit and it felt like a huge burden was relieved though afterwards. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what the f is this? Nothing. I saw the video, I know what you've been doing. Amazing. We're just friends, we're just hanging out. This is full what are you This is full You had told me that you were gonna be at your grandma's today and this is where you are. 
Yeah, I don't believe you. Yeah, I could have probably done a few things differently to make this relationship work out. Uh, I could have paid a little more attention, I could have worked less, but honestly, I kind of feel like uh, we, we hit that point of no return maybe six months ago, and uh, we never looked back. I this can't wait for this to be on TV. Ridiculous stuff. I can't wait for this to be on TV. You're pathetic that and you for did your that mom to me. And You're dad to see what you. 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 I can't wait. It'll be satisfying. Oh! Seriously, It'll like, be that's so nice. ridiculous. Security, security, oh, get look at this. Him. Look at this bitch. Hold look at this up, bitch. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey, hey, Brooke. Brooke. You're better than you anyway. Oh, yeah, really? That's what you're saying to me. Ugly ass. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Never. After uh, this whole confrontation went down, I actually uh, immediately felt like I needed to drink. Honestly, I just need to get out there, do my own thing, meet new people. Uh, and just uh, never, never quit, keep going, and that's it. Live every day like it's the last. Following the disturbing realization of her boyfriend's destructive behavior, Tiffany Crawford seems determined to hold her relationship together. Tiffany declares that although she forgives him, this will absolutely be the last time. The suspect, John, at first admits he's too embarrassed to talk to Cheater's producers. Then John finally expresses that he has cut off all contact with his former companion. The companion, known as Lucky, only states to Cheater's that she believes the suspect will be back in the club sooner or later. Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Byron Halpern decides to come to cheaters. Distraught over his girlfriend's recent change in personality, Byron seeks answers from the professionals at cheaters. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, you know, we were in high school. We were high school sweethearts. You know, I thought she was the world. You know, I would basically give her anything she could possibly want if I could get it. But for like the past six months, for some reason, I just had suspicion. Ladacia Robertson, age 20, an unemployed woman accused of using her feminine wiles to get her buzz on. Briefed on the facts of the case, Cheaters dispatches a unit to the residence the suspect shares with her parents. The suspect, Ladacia Robertson, leaves home texting on her phone. After a few minutes, an unknown vehicle pulls up in front of the house. The suspect gets in, and the car drives away. Followed by the cheaters team, the pair stop at a nearby grocery store. A few minutes later, the suspect and her mystery man emerge from the store. The pair hop into the car and drive away. She's always claiming she's busy for some reason, when she doesn't have a job. And it's hilarious, because she's always saying it's with her family. But the funny thing is, when I call her family, when she's supposed to be with that family member, her mom, her aunt, or what have you, I'll call just to, you know, touch base with her, make sure everything all right. Can't get in contact with her. So I get worried, I'll call. Hey, have you talked to Lelisha? Oh, no, I haven't talked to her. What do you mean you haven't talked to her? She said she was with you. Oh, well, she ain't been with me all day. But I'm like, Man, where's she been at? When I finally get in contact with her, she was like, well, I was at my partner's house. I had to help him install this computer. Duh. You don't even have a job. Did he pay you? Nah, he didn't pay me. All right, whatever. Then she comes home with a big, you know, bag of smoke. And then I be wondering, like, how you get that? Oh, he did. He gave me this for installing a computer. Nah, you ain't get that from installing no damn computer. Hell no. Nah. Because they, if they install a computer for that, I, where can I install some computer? The vehicle arrives at an empty parking lot. Within minutes, Robertson engages her consort on her knees. 
After some time, the suspect stands up and hugs her companion. The pair get into the car for a short jaunt back to the Robertson residence. The suspect kisses her secret lover. When the two finally separate, the unknown male leaves and Robertson walks inside. I really want to build something with her. I want to build a family with her, you know, have a big house, three car garage, have some little ones running around. But for some reason, we're not seeing eye to eye right now and I'm thinking something's going on. I can't really put my finger on it. Like, I just know it's somebody else. Like, I just got a feeling. She don't act the same towards me no more. She, the same feelings that we used to have, she doesn't have them. Like, if I tell her I love her, yeah, all right, I'll yeah, back at you. Like, when did that start happening? Like, that, that just makes me feel like there's somebody else. Like, I'm not the only one in the picture anymore. Cheaters detectives continue to stake out Robertson's home. After a while, Ladesha emerges to meet with the driver of the white sedan. Robertson and her illicit lover drive to a nearby museum. Now, the odd thing that Cheaters investigators note seems to be that the museum is closed. The empty parking lot serves a far different purpose, however, mainly as a play area for the suspect and the driver, now identified as Damien Franklin. After the conclusion of her lusty activities, Robertson pulls up her shorts and gets into the passenger seat of the vehicle. Franklin returns Robertson to her residence, where the suspect passionately hugs and kisses her beau. The two then part ways. Franklin leaves as the suspect enters her home. The stakeout of Robertson's family home continues with round-the-clock surveillance by Cheater's operatives. Once again, Franklin picks up Robertson. The pair, followed by a tailing Cheaters mobile team, arrive at a taco stand in the area. Robertson and Franklin stand at the window ordering their food. Franklin sits on the hood of his car as they both eat. Afterward, the forbidden couple leave. Franklin follows his motif and drives to an obscure, empty parking lot. Franklin passionately hugs the suspect. Then the fun becomes vulgar as the pair continue to have intercourse on the hood of the car. Sometime later, Franklin lifts the suspect off the hood. Robertson then gets into the vehicle alongside Franklin. The suspect and her companion drive back to Robertson's residence. As the partying pair end their day, Cheater's operatives begin theirs, collating all the case facts for a bereft Byron. Coming up, The Confrontation. With the suspect's indiscretions fully exposed, Cheater summons Byron for a case briefing. Despite his insecurities and deciding that knowing is better than not, Byron prepares to face the truth. First thing I'd like to say, Byron, is uh, thank you for coming out today. I understand that you and your significant other have been going through some hard times. Yeah, I have a few suspicions. With that being said, Byron, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. Before I show you what we've come up with, I want to warn you that some people may find this disturbing. It may upset you, but it's just to show you, you know, the truth and what's going on. All right. All righty. We begin our investigation outside of her family residence. You recognize that house? Yes, I do. That's her mom's house. All right. She leaves her mom's house. We see Ladesha walk outside. This white vehicle pulls up, and she gets into the passenger side, and her detectives follow. That's when the two arrive at a store. I'll stop it right there. Do you recognize that gentleman? Yeah, that's one of my partners. That's one of your partners? Yeah, that's one of like, my friends. Really? Who is that? Friend. This big Damon. So his name's Damien? Yeah, Damien. So you know him? Yeah, I know him real good. Short time later, after going into the store, the two of them emerge. They get into Damien's vehicle, and they leave. As our detectives follow the two of them, they arrive at this parking lot. That's when we see Damien get out. And I don't know if she dropped something, but I see her head moving in a certain manner that... Oh, uh, no. Nah. She, is she on her knees, man? Yeah, you could... So I could you, tell right there. How do you feel about seeing this? Man, maybe man in the bed. That's supposed to be my partner. Then he, they hugging him right there. They're hugging and kissing. They embrace after she's on her knees for some time. They get back into the vehicle, and they leave the parking lot together. They return to her mother's house 
That's when we see them get out of the vehicle. Damien hugs this woman. But so this is what she's doing all day while she's supposedly ripping and running from her mama. Yeah, she's been lying to you, as you can see. Continuing on with our investigation, Byron, on this day, we are outside of Ladacia's family residence. A few moments later, we see her walk out, Damien already waiting. She gets in the passenger side of the vehicle, and they drive off. As our detectives follow them, they arrive at a taco stand. They get out, walk up to the window, and order some food together. During this meal, Ladacia receives a phone call. Byron, and I want you to tell me if you remember this. Love you too. While she up here eating tacos with this. Hugging him too, as she was on the phone. After finishing up the phone call and some tacos at the taco stand, they leave, they arrive at another empty parking lot, and that's when we see her sitting on the hood of the vehicle, big Damien, embrace her with a hug. And that's when things get a little bit more serious. That's when mm -hmm. we see the two it's of them. In the empty parking lot though. You're in an empty parking lot engaging in... But you couldn't go out with me, but you want to be in an empty parking lot. Yes, engaging in sexual intercourse on the hood of his vehicle. I told her how I've been done in the past, told her I've been cheated on, and then she turned around and did the same damn thing. Well, after finishing up on the vehicle, they leave that parking lot, and he returns her to her family residence. That's when we see him hug her, slap her on the behind right before she walks inside. Damien leaves. Byron, you know what you've seen. You obviously know what's going on. So listen, they're together at a park right now. If we get in the vans, get on the road, we can go confront them. Are you ready? Yeah, I can go, I'm ready. All right, let's go, right this way. Go around by that trash can, that green trash can, go around by Right there, right there, man. What the <laughs> What's going on? What's, 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 what's going to be my whole ass? Ladesha, can I talk to you? Why is your top off, Ladesha? You going to be my partner, whole ass? What the f you mad for, bro? What the f you mean, why I'm mad for? I'm with you, man. You whole ass. What you mad at me for? You mad at me? you. Coming up next, the conclusion. They're together at a park right now. Ladesha, can I talk to you? Why is your top off, Ladesha? You supposed to be my partner, ho ass. So you just jump on us like that? Man, f you, what the f you got going on? What the f you got going on? You supposed to be at your mama's house. You out here in the park, like y'all having a picnic. This is your friend, correct? Yeah. My name's Clark, I'm with the show Cheaters. I apologize for running up on you like that, but. You've been spending some time with this with with this girl Ladesha, from what I understand, yeah. Yeah. What exactly happened? How did you guys How did you guys start really doing all that? One well, night nice. we were just chilling, got drunk, and then it just happened from there. It happened from there. Yeah. Why Big Damon? Why nobody else? Cause you're boring. I'm boring. Yeah. Why you couldn't just come out and tell? Didn't you know want to. So you just decided to come out here in an empty parking lot and all that. Huh? Mm -hmm. For your friend's request, Byron, we've been following you guys for a couple days. Do you recall any of these days taking her to the Air Museum, you guys engaged in sexual intercourse on the hood of your vehicle? You saw we find the whole way. Bro, come on. Ladesha, is this what you wanted? Oh, this is not what I wanted. Well, this is all your fault. No, it's not my fault. So whose oh, fault is I'm gonna see you all way. You supposed to be my partner. Talking about you my friend, you out here with my girl? I ain't tripping, bro. 
You ain't shit, but I'm no whole ass. It's a female, bro. What you mad about? I've been with the hell for three years, bro. What you mad for? He was born. He wasn't interested no more. So. so instead of cheating on him, why wouldn't you just tell him that in the first place so he wouldn't get to this point? I don't know. He was always at work and stuff. What if you just walked up on him doing this to you? How would you feel? No feelings. No questions. No feelings? No questions? Nope. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but all right. What about you, Damien? You guys have been friends for almost your whole life. I understand a drunk mistake between the two of you, but why not? Why not tell? Why not tell your man? You could have just told. Him. Well, you I ain't had the kids out here. You was always at work. You never had time, so. When I did have time, you was at your mama's house. You doing something for your mama? You guys went out and got food together. He called you and you even lied to him when you were with him. Yeah, they got this on tape. I don't know what you're talking about. You want to see what he's talking about? Yeah, let me see because I how really long, don't know what he's talking Adesha, about. How long has this been going on? This is this is. This is a load of crap. I don't like this. Why are you doing this? Who is it? I don't know who that is. Really? You don't know who that is? No. It like, must be your twin. That looks like you, unless you have an identical twin. That ain't you right there. Oops. That's all you got to say is oops. Yep. That's all? Yep. You have nothing else to say. No remorse, no feelings, just blank I face. I don't to do with y'all. Blank face. For real. Real talk. I'm going to see you, bro. Damien, what about you, man? I mean, was this worth a friendship with with yeah. with Byron or no? Did you guys start to like each other? Well, I mean, what was the deal? Yeah. I mean, is any time to be honest? It's like your friends already yeah. seeing everything yeah. you guys have done. You know, he's Not seen nobody you. Else, one of my partners. He's seen you on your knees. He's seen you on your knees. He's also seen you on the hood of that car over there. That wasn't me on the car. That wasn't you on the car. Nope. Engaging I in sexual intercourse. Made up. Yeah. Yep. So this is Photoshop. This is this this isn't you. Damien, is this her? Oh my gosh. Can y'all please stop this? Oh See, you could have prevented all this by just being honest. Why do you keep doing that? Damn, it's not his Man, fault. It's you. Do you have no remorse for human feelings? I, I mean, Damien, no when you see how she's you. done your best friend like this, how does she know you, how do you know that she's not gonna do you like that? Because I'm not. I'm she's asking not him, boring. not you. I mean, Damien, how could you, how, how could you not be worried that she's gonna, she's gonna do this to you too, as well? Forget your keys. Where are you going? I'm going out getting my keys. I have the keys. You got the keys? Yes. See something in there you need? Hey, yeah, yeah, I see something. Hey, man, what's up, bro? What are you doing? Yeah, ho ass, I bet you could. stupid. I bet you care now, don't you, hoe ass? Yeah. No, you get the back. I bet you care now, don't you? Oh, dumbass. Was this worth it? Yeah, it was worth it. Tell Smash. his ass he needs to quit being boring. It doesn't look too boring. You just smashed up your windshield pretty good. Hey, watch out, watch out, watch out. All right, let's, hey, let's, uh, hey, are you all right? You okay? Yeah, all right. You ready? Let's load up, all right? Despite being disgusted by the actions of the suspect, Byron heads down a road of indecision. Later, Cheaters updates you on his final resolution. But for now, Vanessa Upton returns to Cheaters to inform how she is faring since catching her boyfriend with another woman. I was upset when I saw him with another woman, specifically someone that I knew. And so when I saw them together, I just felt hurt and betrayed and just felt like my whole world was crushed because I thought we had a future and a life together. Here I am. I thought you were working. What the? Hey, I, I just, we just with went her? out. Just went out. We just went out. Sorry. Hey. I'm with. I'm sorry. It ain't nothing like that. It ain't nothing like that. We just, we just went out. Just, just, just. How many times? I have not spoken with him since. He's tried calling me a few times, but I haven't answered. I don't want to talk to him. I'm completely done. 
So maybe he's still with that girl. Maybe they're happy. I don't know. This wouldn't have happened if he would have just been truthful and honest with me. Now the public knows who he is. That is my man right there. Not anymore. He's not with you anymore, Vanessa. Hey. He's with one out. He's really? You're going to go off with her? Yes, he's with well, I mean, no. I told you. I told you. I mean, I just. Hey. Hey, let him go. Even though it was hard going through my boyfriend cheating on me and having to end things that way, it all worked out in the end. I've moved on and I'm so much happier now. So all in all, I think it was a good thing that this happened. Completely dismayed at the suspect's actions and attitude, Byron Halpern has chosen to break things off with the suspect. As for the suspect's part in the affair, Ladesha Robertson denies having meant to hurt Byron's feelings in any way. Ladesha feels that Byron will come back around sooner or later. When questioned by Cheater's producers, Damian Franklin refused to comment on the case. Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Having a child late in life presents Tina Martin with its own set of issues. Lately, Tina's husband's behavior causes an affront to their relationship. Wanting to raise one child, not two, Tina comes to cheaters for answers as to why her husband seems to have reverted from a full-grown man into a teenager with attitude. I'm Clark Gable. And this is Cheaters. The thing of it is, things that have been, uh, that have changed recent that I really have started noticing is uh, he's just not been attentive to me like he always was, you know, and, and it was very important that we always have like a, at least one special night out of the, out of the week, if not maybe two weeks, you know, because we both have really big, uh, busy schedules and and uh, when it got to the point where I was like fixing his favorite meal and let, yet he had to work late or wasn't hungry, that kind of thing, that was kind of a, a you know, that made me question things. Our son, you know, he's just been always there for him and, and now it's like missing a practice here or there, not being there for him, not, not being there to tuck him in, you know, things like that. You know, you just notice those little things. Lester, age 55. A lot manager at a car auction suspected of discounting his relationship. Cheaters Intel deploys a squad of investigators to the suspect's place of employment. After lunchtime, the suspect waits for someone in his van. An unknown lady shows up, and the two leave the auction yard in Lester's van. The pair stop briefly at a drive through After ordering lunch, the suspect drives the female in his van to a nearby lake. Then, Lester and his lady friend eat lunch. I found condoms, not only in the house, in the door, but also in the van. And he's got, you know, like a huge van and it's customized and everything. And so that's, that was, that was just it. You know, that made me question things very much, so. I brought up the, uh, finding the condom in his van because I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. And, of course, you know, his, his thing was he said that, you know, he, he had let a friend of his from work borrow the van. He had to work late, and he told him, well, since I'm working late, you can borrow the van, you know, and he said he must have left it in there. And I'm like, there's something in here that tells me that, it's, you know, there's something else going on, and I really don't want that to be going on. Having finished the meal, Lester hops out and walks around the vehicle to get into the back. Lester and his lady come to terms with the floorboard. After a few minutes of illicit fun, Lester exits the van shirtless. The suspect hops back into the driver's seat. The van returns to the auction yard, and Lester and his mystery maid both go inside. 
You know, the thing of it is, is that I really, really uh, am concerned about, you know, what if my, my suspicions are true and, and what that's gonna do, not just to me, because I know how it's gonna affect me. I've been there before and, I, and I'm gonna be so angry, so free and angry and just, you know, devastated at the same time. But there's, here's uh, Alex, you know, and he's involved. He, you know, he's a big part. <laughs> Uh, the worst scenario to me is that Alex and Austin hate his father. I don't really want him to hate his father. They can't, you know, that, that's not going to be good for him. Uh, I, I've got students in my class that, you know, are raised only by their mothers, and they don't get to see their fathers and stuff. But I don't want that with my our son. I don't want that. I, I want, I still want Lester to be there, you know, for Alex. You know, if he can turn his back on me, that's one thing, but don't turn his back on his son. He just he can't do that, you know, because Alex needs his father. All boys need their fathers. I think that's really important. Cheaters detectives keep up the stakeout. Once again at lunchtime, the suspect waits for his companion in his van. As soon as she gets in, the pair drive away. A cheater's mobile unit follows the suspect and his date, now identified as Maria Davis, to a convenience store. A short time later, Lester and Davis exit the store. Lester deploys his arm protectively and wraps Davis's shoulders as they head to the van. The suspect drives back to his favorite lakeside parking lot. And again, Lester climbs into the back of the creeper van. The two adulterers begin to get busy in the back seat. After a bit, Lester gets out, tossing away an item which cheaters detectives discern to be a used prophylactic. Flipping his sunglasses onto the windshield, the suspect fumbles with his shirt. Lester enters his van and takes the wheel. The pair drive back to work. Spotting the suspect's routine, Cheaters keeps the stakeout in place. The suspect waits for his co-worker, and once Davis gets into the van, Lester drives the two back to his favorite watering hole. Finding the lake crowded today, the suspect adjusts the shades on the van in order to give a small bit of privacy. Things begin to shake, rattle, and roll as the pair of lovebirds get down to it. A short time later, a shirtless Lester climbs out. The suspect again litters the environment with his dirty love glove. Lester gets into the driver's seat. Davis rolls up the shades. The only change in routine consists of the suspect dropping his hottie off at a bus stop before he heads home to a disillusioned Tina. Coming up the confrontation. Now with proof of infidelity firmly established, Cheater subpoenas Tina to give her a full briefing of the case facts. Concerned about the status of her marriage, Tina faces facts and views the information. Tina, first thing I'd like to say is thank you for coming out this afternoon. I understand we had to pull you away from a few things, so we're glad to have you here. As you know, we have conducted our investigation, Tina, and we have come up with some interesting findings. Are you prepared to see what we have come up with? Uh, yes, I guess so. All right. Yeah. Tina, we begin our investigation outside <laughs> of Lester's workplace. A few moments later, we see this female emerge. She gets into the passenger side of his van, and they drive. As our detectives follow these two, they arrive at a fast food joint. They grab some food at the fast food joint and they drive away. That's when we see the two of them arrive at a lake. He parks his van. We see them eating food together. That is him yes, on the driver's uh -huh. side, yeah? That's when we that's see- That's my Lester, yes. That's when we see your Lester get out of the van. He then walks over to the double doors, opens them, and the two of them go in the back. A few moments pass. We see Lester get out of the passenger side of the vehicle without a shirt on. No, 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 no. That can't be. That... He goes over to the driver's side, gets in, and they leave together. They then return to his workplace. I can't believe he's and she doing leaves. That. On this day of our investigation, Tina, we are outside of his workplace. She gets into the passenger side of his van. Before he gets in, he receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you remember this, even this day. Thank you 
He then leaves his workplace after completely lying to you, Tina, over the phone, and they arrive at that same lake. We then see the van rocking back and forth. No, 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 I'm no, no, I'm really no, no, sorry no. about this. This can't be. This... <laughs> Sometime later, we see him exit. He then throws a prophylactic from his hand as he exits the van. Did you see that hit the ground? Yes. After finishing up these antics at the lake, they leave, and he drops her off at this bus stop. Tina, at this point in time, we know exactly where they're at. They're at a location very close to here. I'll let our detective know that we are on our way. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I, I want to. Right this way, please. Me. Right there. Lester, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah. What happened, man? Who, who's this? Who's this girl? Uh, she, uh, she, she's just from work. She's just from work. Yeah. Have you? And then we're, we're, we're what just, are you doing? Why are Why are all of her clothes we're, off? Why, what are you doing? We're just. Uh, what are you freaking doing? I was doing a. We're married for 15 years. I was doing years. a damn taxes. Stop! You're not doing now. Yeah. Look, you have a son with me. You have a. I know I do. Yeah, but if you would be doing what I want you to do, then I wouldn't have to mess yeah, with her. Yeah, why don't you, you got to communicate with me, Leslie. This is uh, bull****. I've been communicating Damn it. with you. Yeah, bull****, Leslie. Did you, did you have any idea that this is no. his wife of 15 years? No. They have a son together? No, no. I don't. How did that happen exactly? Do you work with this man? Yes, I mean, What are you freaking doing? Well... You know, 15 years. So take this and just stop it. Stop it where you need it. Okay. God Almighty, I cannot believe you would do this to a family, Leslie. Well, I, I wasn't doing nothing. Yeah, well, you shirts off. You're at it's hot training. outside. What do you think? Outside, you were in the van. What so what? We were what just you hanging out. Hanging out with yeah. your shirt off. Yeah. Coming up, the conclusion. Did you have any idea that this is no. his wife of 15 years? We were just hanging out. Hanging out with yeah. your shirt off. Are these condoms? <coughs> condoms. So what is this about? But you haven't been doing nothing for me for the past 10 years. Uh, I haven't been to, uh, I don't, I keep this figure, I keep, I do what I do. I work every day just like you work every day. I take care of our son, I make sure you have clean clothes. I even run you a friggin' bubble bath for you. And see, you running one for me. And I ain't doing nothing for you. No, I'm in that No, now. you're not doing enough for me. Yes, sir, I have two questions. Is this you outside of your work with that lady? And why are there condoms in your, in your uh, van? What are these well, for? That's me and we were just getting yeah, off from work. You. You were just getting yeah. done with work? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's all you were doing? That's yeah, all we're serious? doing. You're going to keep lying to me? Hey, I'm not lying to you. Really? OK. Hey. You're not lying to me? No, I'm not lying so to you. So this day when you got a phone call from her and you guys drew all the shades in your van right in that same parking spot back hey. there and your van was rocking I'm back and forth? Well, that was because of the sun, you know? The sun makes your van rock back and forth. No, it's hot. Really? Yeah. So why did you get out with your shirt off and throw a condom on the floor? If there was any time to tell the truth, you don't think that right now would probably be the no, best time? No, it's not. Not, not. not right now. Not even to your woman? No, not, not my wife. you shared not most of your life with? No. What about your nine-year-old son, Alex? Well, that considers you an awesome father. Un unfortunately, he's part of the problem and part of, part of the issue. Your son is part of the problem? Yeah. And I didn't even know he was married. So what did you just say? What did you just say about Alex? Alex? Well, I love Alex, but you wanted a kid. I really didn't want a kid. You told you know? me you wanted a family, Leslie. You said you wanted us to have a family. It sounded good, didn't it? And you bought it, didn't, uh, didn't well, you? Yeah, so it's all just about buying your story, buying your... So, you so this it. isn't the first time, is that what you're telling me? No, this isn't the first time. I thought I was... I mean, I have a couple oh, different no, shots happily, of you. We were happily married. Do you for, sh for a short time. Will you hold this for a second? Short time? Sure. Those are yours. Yeah, yeah, I called on those. You're going to need them. What is going on? You didn't. You told me you were separated. Are you kidding me? 
Well, I used you too. What? I used her too. What the? Yeah, I used you too. So you dipped the pen in the corporate ink, basically. Yep. You got it. You desecrated your workplace, your relationship. You know yeah, you're a pig. You're a pig. You're lucky you're a woman. What do you mean, lucky she's a woman? If she wasn't a woman, I'd hit her back. You'd hit her back? Yeah. What is, what is Alex going to think? What is our son going to think? What did you he, No, he's been missing you just the last two months, three months. And then now? I'll get together with him one of these days. You'll get together with him. Yeah. Okay, so you know, you know the what yeah, I've talked to you about the children in my class. It hurt over the years. I know I've talked to you about how they hurt because their daddy's not there, and you're telling me well, there's going to be the for I, him. I tell you what I wanted you to hear. So when your son grows so older I'm and gullible. wants to meet his father, the first time he meets her and he knocks you out, how's that going to make you feel? Probably mm -hmm. won't be feeling much, huh? Probably not. Because I know that's what I'd do if you did this I to my mean, mother. Probably not. So ridiculous. Oh how many other bands have you got from being at work and stuff? How many other women have you got? Like, I did not know Come on, Lester. Talk to me. You, you know, you got all those words, all that yeah. line and They'll stuff. They'll get over it. You know, apparently. And you get over it, too. Talk yeah. about it. But Lester. I can handle anything. You can handle anything? Yeah. Talk didn't to seem me. you could handle a Come relationship of 15 tell years. Me, I mean, tell, you know, if nothing else, tell me more lies. You know, tell me how he's going to get over that. How I suck. I don't have to tell you nothing no more. Oh, no, what, what? Are you a little embarrassed? You should have been, emba been embarrassed a long time ago. I'm not ago. embarrassed. I'm no. not embarrassed. You know? You're not embarrassed. No, I'm not embarrassed. So you have no remorse for any of your mistakes or anything? No, nope. I got what I could from her. And obviously, they cannot be your lying, your lying, you're dying to yourself. I don't understand how you could do this. Like, you have no regard at all for your son. Oh. Not at all. Live or die, you don't care. Nope. <laughs> this cannot be. This cannot be. You're a piece of work. You know, yeah. God, I'm just glad I don't have anything more than just my hands. You know, I could just. Oh, Lester! Well, have at it, baby. You know? You want me to just punch you? You know, I'm it. out of character. You're out of character. I'm not being out of character. This is for us, this is for me. I have you, Lester. You're not worth it. You're not worth it anymore. Can you, can you please take me home? I'll take you home when I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready to leave now. Why would you want to go home with this man? I'm ready to leave. You're going to take her home? That's all right. You can just take, take me to the bus stop. Like, I don't even care. I just want to get out of here. Lester. I just can't believe you would do this to 15 Let's years. 15 years. Home. My lawyers are going to tear you up on that 15 years. You know that? We'll see. Yeah, you, you think this what? evidence is going to help you? When you guys get divorced, yeah, saying that I'm you don't care if, you're, I'm if, going you're, to use this. if your son's alive or not, Lester, do you have anything else to say to oh your, your ex-wife? No. This way. Not, not, not at this time. I don't have anything to say. Okay, yeah. Just take me back. Just take me back. Load up. Load up. Load up. Let's load up. Load up. Load up. After the events of the confrontation, Tina takes a few days to figure out what she plans to do. At the end of the show, Cheaters fills you in on her game plan. But first, Chelsea Hannigan comes forward to explain her remorse for the night she was confronted by Cheaters. When the Cheaters man knocked on the door um, and asked for Cameron, I didn't really know what was going on. It was kind of like a shock, I didn't know. Um, and then I put it all together, and he said that, you know, her, his girlfriend Crystal is outside. Then I knew immediately. I seen all the cameras, and I knew who, exactly what was going on. So what the f is this? So what the f is this? So what is this? So what is this? Who is this? What is this? What is this? What is this, what is this though? What is this though? What is this though? Let's get everyone. Get off my porch. Get off my porch. Go. Who is this? That's who he shares a home yeah, with. You live with her? What's your name? My name's Chelsea. Okay. Chelsea. She just came around my face. Okay. Looking back at the confrontation, I regret being hateful or mean or lashing out towards Cameron's girlfriend, Crystal, I believe her name is. But I, I hope that she's doing well, her and her baby. But I just feel bad for lashing out at her because nothing was her fault. She was in the dark just as well as I was. So I, I wish her well. But as far as Cameron, I don't want to have any contact with him. We just moved too fast. He swept me off my feet, you know, charmed my pants off. And I didn't really realize who he was and what he was about. You stay with this bitch. Still got a question. Watch out, watch out. You there you go. I didn't look in your There you go. 
Hey, I think she's burning her clothes. She ain't burning, burning my clothes. Back being a <laughs> in five minutes, bet. Now get that bitch on. And we were spending money together. All right. There's bo we got boxers here, and I mean, there's some, there's all sorts of stuff there. Hey, Chelsea, what exactly? That hit me up. Did he tell you he was single? He or? told me he had a baby, but he didn't tell me this bitch was pregnant. It was pretty much a wake-up call. I woke up and realized what I was doing wrong with relationships. I sat down and, and really got to know who I was and what I wanted in a man and, you know, what I want in a relationship. And I realized what went wrong, and I know how to fix it. So I'm just taking time for myself and just focusing on me and moving forward. Following the incriminating confrontation, Tina Martin feels the need to let her husband go. Unable to understand the suspect's motives, Tina believes they need to separate. Tina's found alternative living arrangements for herself and her boy. The suspect, Lester, refuses to comment to Cheater's producers. The suspect's companion, Maria Davis, claims that had she known the suspect had a wife, she would have never have messed with him in the first place.